Hello, welcome back to another episode of Canode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX. This week on the show, we got Garrett Reynolds. I tried to get Tony Ennis, but uh, he wasn't down, and he pointed over to Garrett, and he's like, that guy will do it. I was like, all right, fine. So we talked to Garrett Reynolds for three hours. He's done a couple things in BMX, and we tried to go along with his story, but it just branches off, and it's a, it's a wild ride, so I hope you guys enjoy if you like the show, if you like this episode, share it with your friends, like and subscribe, all that stuff, uh, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you don't mind. That'd be cool. And uh, let's see, go to rarelife.com, use promo code Canode to get yourself some green superfoods and be a healthy boy. I think we, we talk about health in this episode a good bit. And uh, yeah, Garrett, thanks for coming on. Hope you all enjoy this episode, and I'll see you next week. Here's Garrett Reynolds. All right, we're on the record. Hi, Garrett Reynolds. What up, dude? How you doing? I'm doing great, dude. How are you? I'm chilling. Chilling. Just getting done doing some stuff around my house and uh, was working on some Fiend soft goods for our future. Hell yeah. Well, tell me about the house stuff first. What'd you do? Um, Just cleaning. I have two pit bulls, so no matter how much I clean, every day I have to clean. They're like, right now they're shedding all their hair, so I do a little bit of vacuuming and that kind of stuff, and then keeping up with my dishes. Just Regular ass shit. Regular ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shark and then... Uh, right? Verona. Shark and shark Verona. And Verona. And the reason um, you always kind of see shark is because shark loves being in like the limelight and the attention. Like uh, when dudes come stay at my house, she literally will wake like Lewis Mills or Johnny Rakes up and like literally Paul slap them and be like, yo, wake up. Like I'm trying to get attention. I need to be played with like you're in my house now, so that's why <laughs> you probably always see shark. And then Verona's kind of more; she's on her own. She's like my, uh, she's like my roommate. Nice. I'm pretty sure she like, actually cleans after herself and shit. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, now and then, what else? What, you said all oh, fiend soft goods. What's going on yeah. there? Um, so we're just working on like, uh, what do you call it? Back to school soft goods and stuff. Me and uh, Tony Ennis, we work together with that. So usually running pretty late. We're uh, under the gun. So had a few it's hours. Crunch time, right? I was like, yeah, you know, I got to kind of get this going. So uh, we got like the first look sheet out and then he'll probably do some changes. And then we'll work from there. You said it, Tony Ennis, he's doing like designs on it or what? Yeah. Yeah. We both, we both help with everything, you know, like BMX companies are pretty small. So yeah. it's like literally both of us help out wherever we can. So how big is Fiend, like, people-wise? I know there's a Bob. I know there's you and Tony. Tony and the Riders. <laughs> no shit. It's just you three like and then the Riders, yeah? yeah? Yeah. No kidding. That's dope. Yeah, we're so pretty what... much ran through, like, distro and stuff. Uh, What distro? Uh, We're through Blackout. Nice. Blackout well, who else is Who else is under Blackout? I don't know. Uh, Kink, Cinema. Um not really sure at the top of the mode. I know they had Etnies in there for a long time. And I think one of the helmet companies, but I'm not sure what's going on with that. Yeah. It seems like there's like four or five main hubs and then every, yeah, yeah. All, every single company has run through this. Yeah. Because I mean, you want to put yourself in like a situation with people that have like real experience in the industry. Yeah. for real. And then all the like, dealings with like buying the shit in Taiwan and then, yeah. Right? Is that where does is Fiend in the U.S. or like made in the U.S. No, thing? Um, most BMX companies ran out of Taiwan. We ran yeah. out of Taiwan just as well. And there's like uh, once you go over there, there's a bunch of different factories you can use. All the BMX ones use like the highest end factories. Yeah, it's it's wild. Like I I remember thinking as a kid, like it was just it, just like wow, there's this big BMX industry. And then the more you learn, you're like, oh shit, it's tiny. And then everybody's no, kind of no, using the same factories and stuff. Like, it, yeah. yeah, it's super tiny, super connected. And then like, I don't know, even BMX in the cycle world, we're on the really small end of it. Yeah. Like for instance, during COVID, like I think our factory works with Giant and it was like really hard for us to get stuff because Giant placed like an order that's insane stupid like, big yeah yeah like money rules everything so it's like all right yeah you guys sit back we're gonna do this order then we'll get to you when we get to you that's cute your little bmx company we got giant <laughs> yeah and like we love using colors that are really hard like really um like intense paint mixes that are like they want to mix it just to the amount of frames you're gonna make where like a company like giant will like order 2,000 frames in like the most basic blue 
they're yeah. like, why, why are you guys so hard to deal with? I mean, we're like so <laughs> specific about decals and placements and all that stuff too, but I don't know. So it makes, it's what makes BMX bikes look cool. For to real. Me, you know, we, we put in way more effort. I feel like. What does it look like for you? Like, on, what is your technical title and what does it look like for you? As I mean, I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even have a title. I'm just like the overall owner and like literally will help anywhere as I need to. So it's like I'll help out book people's flights if they need help with that. Um, when it comes to trips, I pretty much run them, budgeting, driving the van, figuring all that stuff out. Um, Captain. Yeah, I'm just kind of jack of all trades, you know? Yeah, that's dope. But I mean, our dudes are super self-sufficient. Like we don't really need like a team manager. You know what I mean? If you make it on Fiend, it's pretty much, I'd say, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so like, like it, yeah. it'd be a really hard position for someone to tell one of us what to do. I'd be like, get out of here. You're going. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Cut from the yeah, team. Like, dude, how, how, how is this guy telling me what to do? <laughs> for real. Who's the last person that got on Fiend? Um, like officially as a pro it had been johnny and lewis well who came first johnny or lewis johnny and then um lou? it was lou first and then johnny nice but it was pretty much the same timing and they um, yeah, they got the bump up but they were like repping m forever right yeah yeah we were trying to get the company to a point where we could turn them pro we obviously knew that they're both like pro level riders and yeah. um you know for a company like us it's hard to sponsor those kind of dudes because you know they're gonna make a case within like a week of being on the company to be like, all right, turn him pro. <laughs> like, financially, it doesn't usually work that way. But yeah. um, yeah, we turn him pro at the same time. We just we uh kind of give everyone's uh frame like a life cycle. So we gave Lewis's frame out first and Johnny's frame second, so they don't compete with each other. Nice. I just. <laughs> um how did johnny come up because i remember when i worked for sabrosa i was like i was in johnny's ear like come on come right for sabrosa yeah like, so yeah. the whole thing with him getting on was kind of funny actually because like he he was on like sabrosa flow i believe or he'd won a bike or something something and then he entered like a fiend contest for maybe a jj giveaway i want to say and like he clearly won it but we didn't give it to him because it was like, I'm pretty sure this guy's like <laughs> on semi hooked up by Sabrosa. And it's like, just like a, it's like a respect thing. You know what I mean? You don't want to go around like trying to steal each other's riders and shit. It's whack. So yeah. we gave it to another kid and then uh, Sauce wound up reaching out to me eventually. And I was like, yo, like he really wants to ride for Fiend. Like, what do you guys think? Blah, blah, blah. And we were just like, yeah, it's like whatever. Like he was talking with JJ at the time. JJ is one of my best friends in the world. And like JJ is like, yo, he's like, seriously, he's like, seems like a really solid kid. Like, you know, don't sleep on it. And uh, For real. the rest Not of history, on the bike, like he's off the bike, just a solid guy, which is it's yeah, so yeah. cool to see him like, grow into uh, his jujitsu and this, whatever this shit is. I love it so much. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, he's ready to go. He's, he's really came out of his shell over the past few years. It's funny. Cause like, um, the first time he came and stayed with me, I want to say he stayed for like two or three weeks. And like, I'm a little bit shy. He's like, at the time was like super shy. And yeah. I could just remember like being in my car and like trying to get conversations going was like pulling teeth. It was just so <laughs> hard to get him to talk about anything. He was yeah. sitting there playing with his bike and shit. And like, <laughs> on a little like, like toy bike on the dashboard or something. <laughs> yeah. Just literally like, like, just like, dude, like, I don't know. I <laughs> Take me riding, leave me alone. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm gonna produce and kill it, but like, I don't know what I want to say right now. And um, it was so funny. Like there was days we'd be out, and I'd be like, "Dude, he needs a rest day." Like someone like me who's been doing it for so long, I could just see. I'm like, he's like slower. Things are harder for him, and I'm like, he's at my house. Like, yo, what do you want to do tomorrow? Like, I think we could go to the beach or do this or do that. And he's like, I think I want to film. <laughs> 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 he just See, about it just a young little robot dude i yeah. mean imagine like putting being in his shoes and going like you've watched garrett reynolds your whole life and then all of a sudden you're in his house riding for his company like whew. yeah I'm, i it might be, be nervous and quiet too yeah yeah no totally totally it was just funny like but nowadays like when he's at my house he's like he like kicks the door and does you know what i mean it's, <laughs> what's it's up like bitches i'm here human being. like what's up you know spar yeah yeah, what's, yeah i'm trying to play bro I got time yes, to sir. sit here. But yeah. uh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's so dope. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, I am still curious about Fiend. Like, what's the, 
aside from like riding for it, doing the stuff, what's the last, I guess, what's the last trip you guys went on? Was it Arizona? Um, yeah, well, that was like, uh, yeah, we're, me and Johnny were like working on a fiend project along with Matt, but Matt wound up getting hurt. So that was pretty much the last one and we're planning new ones right now. Nice. Is yeah, there... we're working on. Oh, yes. Yeah, finish that sentence. We're working on what? Uh, we're working on like a little video. A little video. Um, yeah. I've heard some whispers about this little video. <clears throat> Can you tell me yeah. anything about it? Um, yeah, I think the full parts will be um, Matt, Johnny, and myself. And then obviously we'll have like a mix section or something, just depending on who will get footage. Like obviously there's a lot of other dudes that have other obligations. So it's really hard to get everyone to get parts together. So it's just kind of like a three person thing. Yeah. Sick. I can't wait. How long has this been in the, in the works? How, like, how many video projects are you filming for at the same time? Cause it seems like you constantly have some shit, you know, secretly stacked up. Yeah. Well, so like I, I consider myself one of the pros It's lucky to actually make a living off riding. So I put a decent amount of my time on the weekends to go on, going out and filming and I don't go out every weekend or whatever, but I just feel like if I'm not really filming or working on something, like I'm taking advantage of it. Yeah. So, you know, having the freedom to go out and having a filmer that works for the company, it's just like, if I don't film ever, I just feel like I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just wasting my fucking life. <laughs> well, that's a good attitude. I was like, uh, I was thinking about being in your shoes and everything that you've accomplished and shit and what keeps you going, you know, is it just the fact that it's your job? Obviously you love the shit. Like what? Is there a no, conscious I, dude, thing I, that like, you think about? Yeah, definitely not my job. Like, it's cool. It is my job. And like the job aspect of it is amazing, but also can take it out of you. Like, I clearly think that if I was kicked off every single one of my sponsors today, tomorrow, I'm going to think about riding the same way. It's just like, yeah. like, I don't even know what drives me anymore. I'm just like, I kind of just want to do this shit. Like, that's what's oh, up. Yeah. I, I think it's like the unknown. Like, I don't know, like the questioning if you can do specific things you've thought of yeah uh did you have any questions uh x games best how, what were your thoughts going into that ring con shit <clears throat> so dude i thought it was sick like i know some people were stressing it but i was like if the 17 year old me this is like my dream contest i'm like this is so sick like for real going into a iconic spot and like just having a session with like really good riders like I don't know. You've been on plenty of sessions and you're a filmer. You've been around this. It's like people feed off each other. Energy and riding are a real thing. Yep. So like if you can create that energy, it kind of helps guide you to do specific things. Yeah. Dude, what uh, Colin's fake up, the energy went from like kind of here to like, oh shit, yeah. let's go. Yeah, you're like, like, oh yeah. It's on. <laughs> that, that was like, that was such a sick thing for him to do it. And then like win and all this stuff because He's been talking about that since we were filming for Fiending. Wow. Yeah. Which was uh, 2014. So like <laughs> literally nine years in the making, like, you know, us drinking beers, talking about it. Like Tony's pretty like, he's pretty in the know of the tricks we want to do that are on like the top of our list. Mm -hmm. You know, like whisper in someone's ear, be like, yo, dude, like, what about the fakie hop, dude? That'd be a good way to close it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it was really sick to see him do it, but it was even sicker to see him do it like, perfect first try yeah like he like didn't 180 be, or anything before it like yeah no, no that's like the craziest relief for him yeah for real and, and you can see it in his like, face anytime that thing comes up in his instagram feed and like a video part like it probably pops into his brain like should i do that fakie hop could i do that fakie hop like it's yep. just the unknown dude and the like the spot is so much crazier in person than in videos like in videos it looks like you know substantial but in there in person there's the two blocks at the bottom the rails yeah. taller than you think and the run-up kind of sucks and the fact that he he did that with with ease was so sick dude and the celebration yeah, he's, was so dope yeah he's he's you know all street spots are like that though i don't i don't think yeah, i've been really. to like many street spots where i was like oh this looks like this is gonna be easy it's like all right I gotta be kind of on top of my stuff and I gotta like work my way up to it. Yep, for real. What's a, uh, what kind of spot intimidates you, if any? Um, All kinds of spots intimidate me. More like, more or less tricks, but I don't like steep rails. Steep rails. Steep rails, like the Raincon rail people were riding. I was like, dude, I don't even want to hit that thing. It's like <laughs> high, high, short and steep, like three things I don't even really like. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, and then like those kind of rails too, they're hard for me to even want to break the ice with them. Cause like for myself, the limitations of tricks I could do on it are like, so whatever that it's like, who cares? Yeah. If you could do any rail trick that you can't do right now, what would you, what would you take from who? Would you still Jordan uh, Godwin's ice know, cards? It'd be nice to get some Jordan Godwin like Kirk Hards like yeah or ice hards like dude he ice hard that rail and Kirk Hard it and I'm like that is I don't think I get pegged hard that rail it's unbelievable dude it's so yeah. nuts dude oh so good it's ride insane, insane. And, and he's he'll say like I'm fucking I'm trash meanwhile he does an ice hard down that steep ass rail well, those, <clears> I mean those are those are the, I mean those are like the attitude of BMXers that are like the tightest ones though they're like yeah for real slightly insecure about their riding which drives them to be better than you know, they would be if they were super cocky. Yeah. There's not a single one that was at the X games. That's like, yo, I'm the shit, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, no one has that vibe. And, I, and like, I'm sure you could see, like, I don't know. Um, like everyone's pretty supportive of each other. Like big time. No one really cares. Everyone's just kind of psyched to be invited. And like, I don't know the whole, the whole event's dope. I think we got like two racks just to ride that. So it was like, yeah, yeah. Dude, I got to ride a six spot with like people I all respect and would love to have a session with at a gnarly street spot and you get paid to do it. That's like the sickest thing ever. Literally dream come true. Like, yeah. Like, I was, dude, I wish Matt I could do this every shit. day. Yeah. Matt ate shit, but I was like, dude, you just got paid two grand to eat shit down a four block. You're chilling. You yeah. know? <laughs> I felt bad for him. Yeah, me too. Just because it happened like so fast to two attempts in. It's like, damn. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And, it, and it's like, it puts it into perspective real quick that like, I feel like a lot of four blocks, you can kind of take a little hip check or something and you probably just kind of walk it off after a couple minutes. Like that thing's like huge. Yeah. Pretty big four block. It's probably like 13 stair size, 14 stair size. Like it's pretty savage. That's no joke. Um, you took, you mentioned Tony earlier and I have always I've been here. I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, how did you meet Tony? Like, how did you guys first link up the legendary so Tony a, Ennis? I have like a really funny story about how I met Tony. Um, at the time I wrote like do tour for park contest and I was working with uh vice and ally sports to do a behind the scenes thing and they were like like I didn't have a filmer that was like up to par like I did all bro cam stuff with my friends mm -hmm. so they were like talking to me and they're like all right so like these are the three filmers you could choose from and like Tony had just dropped in search so I was like oh dude I want to I want him to come like he's like he knows what's up like Huh. Film, he'll know how to do it and then like i'm sure like he hangs out with harrington which i was already friends with so i'm like i'm sure he's really cool so he wound up coming out for that and staying at my house i think like two or three nights or something and then kind of like the rest is history how we became friends but how we really really became friends was um when we were starting fiend we all decided to move to san diego yeah um at the time tony ennis was living with ty and his mom as pretty much ty's filmer so he was like well if i'm coming tony's coming and i was like yeah dude let's do it It'd be Hell perfect yeah. you know and like we kicked it before we did a um staff trip and we went to greenville and raleigh and stuff we had a really good time with them so like i knew him a little bit but it was really more when we moved into uh with each other we really started to like get to know each other how long ago was that shit at this point like how long did you guys uh it would be we're going on our 12th year damn it feels like kind of yesterday because I remember that. You know, yeah, yeah. Like time, a, you know, as you get older, time moves really fast. Yeah, it really. You realize yeah. that. I heard somebody talk about that, and like, when you're younger, the percentage of your life that one year is is so big. Like, yeah. say you're ten years old, one year is like ten percent of your life. But now, as you get older and 33, 34, like, it like, becomes a smaller percentage. Yeah, seven so percent, six percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah it goes, exactly. It goes quicker and quicker. You're like, shit. I'm but, getting old. Where's my pension? um but yeah that's had, pretty much how it happened that's dope i like tony i remember i have like one memory of him in vegas from at nora cup i wound up drunkenly walking through a casino with him and like putting 20 on black or something and just smoking cigs and gambling and he's the shit he's so like he has a very calming demeanor he's the reason oh, you're on this podcast because i was like hey tony will you do the podcast and he's like nah but he will yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 when we're in arizona I was, yeah. I was pushing for i was literally pushing him every night and he like I don't know. We're both pretty reserved dudes, but he's yeah. so he's so hard to get to talk on this kind of stuff. It's yeah, like, it's. Um, but he's um, a man, and he has the sickest personality. For real. And like, 
if he just opened up, everyone would love him. Like even more than they already do. Because yeah. he's the, he's literally the coolest. He's got that secret legendary vibe yeah. to him. You know, I think we all like to stay a little bit like elusive. Just Yours like, is gone now. Now that you've come on this, it's over. I know. It's no longer a legend. I'd have to delete this. Exposed. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see. So I, I, like, let's talk about the origins of Fiend, like how it came up and what you were doing before. I, at some point, I do want to kind of like just get you to tell me your whole ass story, but that's okay, a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm here to try to answer whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think like the big reason for us really, me trying to do Fiend was, um, so Ty and JJ had their runnings with Premium. And I want to say Ty left for uh federal mm-hmm. and then jj left for mongoose at some point and then i was kind of like the last one on and um they weren't like riding for premium was like riding for like a contest company they were like like never really wanted to do trips never wanted to do anything like everything was based on like you know your placement in contests and like i could kind of see that just getting a little bit further in the company and seeing the behind the scenes mm-hmm. Well, like, I love this stuff, but I don't, like, really like having all my eggs in one basket. And then I had, like, a couple situations where I was breaking product at, like, the worst spots. The one I can give you is I did a hop three on flat ground. And my bars broke in the middle of the bend, which I broke on the right side, spinning to my left. And my bike shot up and almost cut my throat. Oh, shit. And I was like, (laughs) yo, like it's not even on the weld. like what's up with this? <laughs> like, it's crazy and i remember um the answer kind of just being at the time and i know they're under like better ownership or whatever and it was like yeah we'll just send you more bars and i was like i don't even think you guys are seeing did you read my message like i was like dude it almost cut my throat like do we need better tubing are we buying the highest quality tubing like what do we need to do to figure this out because i'm down yeah. to die but not, like, <laughs> not like this i want some like product shit you know? <laughs> So, um, so yeah, we were, I was kind of talking about it at a do tour and, um, originally one of the owners of Fiend was supposed to be Josh Harrington. No shit. Sick. Yeah. So it was going to be me Harrington and then Bob was going to help us run it because he already ran uh staff DMX, which was like a kind of like the East coast empire. Yeah. So it was like, we need someone to help us cause we need to focus on riding and like to market the brand, but we need some like. We need the right person to make sure everything's getting handled right. But um, yeah, he wound up kind of changing his mind last minute. And I was still just like, like, fuck it. Like, I don't know. You can't, you can't answer to other people. If you answer to yourself, then everything's on you. So yeah, it seemed like the best decision for me. But also too, it was like, I needed to figure out a way, like with doing all these deadline trips and stuff, I was literally funding it with like the money I made from do tours and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, needed to create an avenue to get the circle of people together that wasn't coming from like my writing. Yeah. I was like, I mean, that's how you know you're in it. <clears throat> yeah. You're spending then, your due tour money on making trips happen, which is so fucking sick. But yeah, yeah it's good that money, you started a company. Money well spent. How much initial investment did it take to start Fiend? I think I started Fiend with like 40 grand. Nice. So and I was like, what is we that started by? pretty small. Um, I mean, depending, I'm trying to think, but say like probably like 200 frames and like a bunch of bars, something like that. Like bikes probably like, or maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it bought us a bunch of stuff, but it was like part of it was salary. Part of it was, you know. It was just the initial investment to get everything going to get it to the next level. Dope. And uh, obviously, it's still around 12 years later. Was it 12 years ago that you started? Uh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Man, that's... 13, 13 years since the idea, 12 since we actually launched the company. So sick. Um, all right, let's rewind a little bit further. I mean, were you a racer? Did you race? No. No, I never raced. I. What's your... What was your first taste of BMX? I'm sure you've done this on something else, but what was your like intro to BMX? So like most kids, I kind of just had a bike. I had this beater like Huffy I got from Walmart and like my dad did um, custom cabinets. 
so we had a shop at our house and there's all this wood always floating around so like obviously kids make ramps yeah that was kind of like my introduction to like jumping my bike and then Just riding off of cabinets riding off yeah riding off Let's of cabinets go. that were like like misprints and stuff like you know <laughs> I had like a pile of shit that wasn't going to get used and i would use that to make little jumps and stuff and i'd always want to break in the wood or whatever but um i saw that were you um i was between i want to say 10 or 11 okay nice yeah and i seen <clears throat> the x games and um on the x games they had a dirt contest and then i remember they had like this segment where they're like dudes were teaching you how to build a dirt jump and i was like half of my yards dirt so like immediately i just started building jumps and um yeah blew through a bunch of bikes and like over time got better bikes and shit i remember like the bike i actually learned and got good on was like a gt vertigo it was like it's probably 2001 or 2002 but this bike was from the 80s with mags and stuff or just like (laughs) yankiest bike trying to learn how to jump this thing and like It was just so ridiculous. You probably weigh a hundred pounds. The bike is like seventy five pounds. <laughs> yeah, like the craziest <laughs> geometry. Nothing sealed on it. Like unsealed mags and stuff. Like just always trying to fix this thing to get one more jump. What was the first trick you learned? Uh, I'm gonna say it had to be like a one footer or something like that. Like, yes, you know, dude. Yeah. The classic dirt jumping tricks in the day yep. and just like one handers and. Dude, I remember it, like the kid in my neighborhood that could do all that shit. I was sweating so hard, just a little baby jump, but he could take both of his feet off. And I was like, that's so yeah, you're crazy, like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so everyone sick. was so loose at this time. Like everyone was a hucker because they saw it on TV and would just try to replicate it, but like never actually learned how to ride the bike. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like 2001, 2002, BMX was so big that like every kid in my neighborhood wanted to come ride my jumps. It was huge, huh? Like it was really, it was really big around this time that it was like kind of like the thing to do. It was Nyquist and Mira and they're like back trail and back trails. And then, um, TJ Lavin had like the, what was it? The fat boy and like all yeah. these bikes and, and like BMX was really small. So those dudes were selling massively. Yeah. Like there's only just a few companies. It's so crazy to think about Nyquist and he's still kicking it, still doing yeah. it. It's so sick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then what's like your first taste of like a video or like what happens after, you know, you learn on the GT in your backyard, how do you take so, that to the next, next place? So, so eventually my parents and stuff, they see that I'm getting pretty into BMX and I'm trying to figure out like a proper bike to get. So I'll say probably 2002 for Christmas, I got a DK six pack and that was kind of, I remember those dude how I started really getting into riding because the bike could take all the abuse and stuff. And um, I originally started going to skate parks, like pretty much grew up riding trails. My brothers went to a skate park. They were skaters and they had um, Tom's River Skate Park used to be two separate parks. And there was a park for skaters and a park for BMX. But I we didn't know this at the time. So I came to the skate park with my brothers and skateboards and then I seen the BMX section. I was like, I didn't even know you could like go to the skate park with a bike. And like, that was kind of the entry to me going to skate parks. And um, long story short, um, that skate park, the BMX side was owned by the actual other owner, Fiend Bob. Oh, no kidding. It's Damn. all ties back together. It's Whoa. Super funny. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Kind of trippy. But I remember going in there and being like, you know, in the skateboard side, like people were trying to do tricks and like no one could land anything. And then like in the BMX section, they had the typical like vert wall box jump. Yeah. And I can just remember seeing people just ripping over the box jump. And I was like, dude, I want to do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that looks funner. <laughs> that looks way sicker. Like, hell yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah. What did you just learn from other dudes at the skate park or did somebody show you a video? Cause I still remember like being 16 and getting into it. And then my buddy showed me voices and I was like, Oh shit, this is what I want to yeah. do. Like, what was your voices? Um, trying to think like, I was like, I think the first BMX video I saw was the miracle boy and Nyquist video. Nice. And yeah. I think I've seen that around the same time because at the time there was like no brawl shops i didn't know about dance comp i didn't know about any of this stuff it was such a new thing to me that like i got this at a bob kisland what's a bob kisland 
it's like a East Coast thing? Five, it's just like a sporting store. Oh, nice. <laughs> and like in a sporting store, there's like a BMX video. And I was like, Mom, can I get this video? Like, it's like I've never, you know, like I only see this at the skate park. And if the X Games are on TV, and like, good luck finding it. Yeah, for real. Man, it was, that was pre internet. No, nah, that's not pre internet, but. Yeah, but it's when the like internet it. was new and. Yeah. You know, shortly after you could like go to LimeWire and stuff and like download videos and give your computer aids. But <laughs> yeah, this is when like videos were still embedded. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, so like shortly after that, I would say I got some other videos and like my original years kind of riding, I was super behind because like, I think I put a bunch of BMX videos on my Christmas list and I got like all the sale rack videos. <laughs> so I got like, best of props 1997 and stuff like 2002 <laughs> so like i was way behind in this beginning phase but i kind of could see like what was going on yeah <laughs> this is so progressive and it's 1997 it's yeah today. and and like if you look at the gap from like 97 to 2002 when i got these videos like shit had changed so much i believe it Huh. Like that was a very time of like bikes getting better, dudes getting better, people pulling up to Woodward. Like it was so new that, you know, contests were getting bigger, which was making people push it harder. Yeah. Well, at what but, point did you, speaking of contests, at what point did it, did you enter a contest? What came first, a video or a contest for you? Um, Video for sure. Yeah. Like, so like by the time I entered a contest, I think the first like real BMX, BMX contest I entered was like a, um, Remember Rooch Jam? Yeah. They did one at Scotty's uh, skate park called the Am Jam. Nice. Which they went around to skate parks and, you know, Tom's River Skate Park wound up going under eventually. And it was like, that's how I started going to Lakewood because a little bit further from us. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I became there. But like Tom's River Skate Park was super, super sick to go to as a kid. Like now looking back at it, like they had like punk rock shows on Fridays they used to box each other in the vert ramp and stuff. It was just like hell yeah, the ultimate like big kids hangout, you know, like yeah. so yeah. loose and just like whatever goes. Compared to like Scotty Park was the complete opposite. It was very like safe place to leave your kid. Like I think anytime I went to Tom's River Skate Park, my parents would like want to be there. But then yeah. when I started going to Scotty Skate Park, it was like this place is super safe and ran super professional. Like we can leave this kid here and he'll be fine. It's nice and wholesome, you know? There's no yeah. bad influences here. Yeah, yeah. No cigarettes being smoked there. No, yeah. To, to put in context, <laughs> the one of the first times I went to the skate park, someone did a sprocket to fake on my dad's hood of his car. <laughs> at Tom's River? Like, at Tom's River Skate Park. Right. It was like, dude, it was so out of control. <laughs> and I it's remember, good. like, it was like it was like a beater chuck, so my dad was, like, not even really pissed about it, but he was like, yo, who did this shit? This the audacity, crazy. dude. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> what's wrong with you guys? Like, Oh, uh, shit. Um, what's the a, what's a video you made? Is it out there? The, one uh, of the, my first, the OG so, Gary Reynolds video? No, my first video, I think, I'm trying to think. The first video I think I ever really made would be, um, I think it was something for Nike. I think I did something because I got on Nike really, really young. How? So I was um, I was hooked up by Etnies for maybe like a year or two because I got into a props. Okay, okay uh, cool. And I got like hooked up pretty quick right after that. But um, I started getting like a little bit further into the contest scene, made it into the pro circuit for like do tour. And then I got approached by this dude named JMO who came from the mountain bike world about – like getting stuff from Nike and them wanting to start a program. And I remember like at the time I really didn't want to leave Etnies. Cause like for me, like Etnies was the sickest at that time. Like Taz, Joe, oh yeah, Mike Escamilla, like you name it, they had it. Best of the best, Ruben. And I was like, dude, I don't know, like Nike, that's like super corporate and like I don't know if they're gonna like really want to do it and then i tried a pair of their shoes and they were cycled uh rubber which is like a really sick cause but they're like the weakest slipperiest shoes ever <laughs> and i was like dude i don't know but my dad was like really like dude this is such a good opportunity and my dad used to talk to john pova mm -hmm. john pova was like this opportunity doesn't happen like your kid's an idiot if he doesn't take it nice. plus 
uh, <clears throat> and he's just looking pretty cool at this time. So there's like no way you'll yeah. rank up over here. You know, like you're a kid. That's we good advice time. from John Pogo, dude. That's <laughs> no, great. it's great advice. Yeah. yeah I just got flashes of your writing on the wall part just came back. I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, there's that whole epic part, which is incredible, dude. So I guess let's talk about that for a second. How long between you getting on and then writing on the wall happening? A couple of years? Um, How long was uh, were you and Nike in general? I want to say, so I want to say Nike phased out in 2017 or 18 can't really remember but i was 2005 to 2005 to yeah like 13 time, 12 yeah. 13 years yeah a really good amount of time wrote it into the ground dude <laughs> <laughs> and there was a couple of times within those waves like it almost kind of went under yeah but. <clears throat> it's crazy to think about like nike going under but it's just like their bmx or 6.0 well, it's just, Whatever. it's different when you look at corporate companies, like for instance, like Fiend can lose money multiple years and we're like figuring out alternatives to like fix it and do it. Where like big corporate companies are ran or they have stocks and stuff. They're like, dude, if it's losing money, we got to trim it quick. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cut it. They're trying to be profitable to get more money to do more stuff. Like, yep. you know, they're, but I mean, those dudes treated us great. I have nothing but nice things to say about the people at Nike. Like they really did let like all of us travel around the world they got a lot of people into bmx which is awesome and um yeah they took care of us for many years yeah i mean the power of the brand nike and then spreading the bmx gospel like yeah pretty I, good i mean even like i think too though there's this crazy comprehension that like people in nike were getting like paid crazy like yeah dudes got taken care of it was like we weren't getting like nike contracts like, yeah. <laughs> You were making as much money as LeBron James. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> my my um my brother's really crazy, and he was like he had a really good idea off the jump. So like when I got signed by Nike, they paid me two hundred fifty dollars a month, and I was like, he was like, that is crazy. You're riding for Nike. Two hundred fifty dollars a month. <laughs> like a BMX, it's like an upcoming kid. Like it's like I'm killing it. Yeah, that's huge. He's like yeah. So at some point, my mom helped negotiate the next contract which doubled my income, which was like next to impossible to do. Hell yeah. And I remember him being like, take it in stock. You want stock opportunities pop up. <laughs> but it was like so funny. It was like, if that would have worked, that would have been. It didn't like, work? Oh, like, shit. Nah. I was going to say, you got Nike stock? Nah. Let's go, dude. <laughs> They're like, dude, this is BMX. The fuck out of here. They're like, no, just take your couple hundred bucks. And shut the hell yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. We bought you a flight, chill. <laughs> we bought you one flight, yep that's the perks man bmx like you make it and you get free travel and free bike parts and you figure out the rest like that's yeah. the kind of the for the majority of i think pro riders at this point there's yeah, and not that many that are really making a true good living off of it in my opinion it's got it's got very hard over the years you know and yeah. um i don't know it's just yeah it's a, it's a tough world i think the bmx industry really needs to work together to try to figure out the next steps of maybe potential growth and what we need to do to help it out and help the riders out and that yeah. kind of stuff. But I mean, really in the end of the day, like you said, the thing that you really do value the most as a rider is being able to travel, yep. um, being able to be friends with so many people, being able to go to cities and just like, I can pop into Barcelona and link with like 30 different people. I could go to France and link with like 10 different people and they'll show me around like the best everything of every city it's like you kind of get the local experience um anywhere as you go just being a bmxer so dope <clears throat> that was it's the memories that i got to get over the years of bmx is like priceless you know yeah i'm sure when i talk to people who are like in the real estate industry or whatever like normal whatever yeah. and they're like you were making how much and i was like don't worry about that <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I, got, I got to go to barcelona and australia dude my first ever trip was i got sponsored by gt when i was 18 and they took me to Sydney and Brisbane to ride with like Dave Dillard and like this whole GT project. Yeah, that yeah. was my first BMX trip. That was like a sponsor yeah. trip. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Australia. All, yeah. All the way to Australia. Like it's yeah. so hard to get to all I'm trying to get to Australia so many times. I've made it twice within my riding career. It's that's crazy. That's, that, that's yeah. a really sick place to get to go for your first riding. Unbelievable. Career. And I had like no frame of reference. I was Cosman was filming the trip and I didn't even know how to act with a filmer. We would ride yeah. past a spot that I wanted to ride and I would just like keep my mouth shut. Just like, that'd be cool. I'm just waiting for somebody to tell me to do the shit, but yeah. Yeah. A, you're just close. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, 
Yeah. Uh, what's the, what's your favorite place you've been? I want to get back to like the timeline of your, your yeah, yeah, sure. story, but what's your favorite place you've been? I don't know. I really like obviously Barcelona for yeah. riding. It's right on the coast. Beaches are beautiful. The lifestyle is really relaxing, chill. The spots are super easy. And then um, I really like Paris. Paris is Paris. really sick too. And then um, I don't know. I love the East Coast just because I'm from there. Like every time I go back to the East Coast, I'm like, damn, I just, I kind of just enjoy the architecture, enjoy the knit and grind of it. Like it's yeah, just it's yeah. older, you know? It's just, yeah, it's just old and historic and like, ran down in spots especially the areas you ride in some there's like something really beautiful about that i feel like yeah speaking of east coast and like i guess so you're finally getting the pro circuit of due tour you get on nike and stuff but when does your passion for street riding come into play so i'll rewind kind of a bit like so like when i always had like all the kids coming through and riding my trails and stuff say 2003 and four kids were starting to fizzle out and um my brothers were skaters so i'd already go down there's a community center down the street from my house and we'd just go ride this like little roll-on flat ledge and like we'd set up kickers to like over benches and stuff and like there's like a little um grass hill i made like i carved a little lip out of and stuff so like there's like the entry level of street riding but that year um I was riding and I met this kid, Corey, who became my best friend, but he was like core street guy. And he kind of like showed me the ropes of all the street riding stuff. So like I was two years younger than him. So like I could kind of cruise around my area, but I couldn't cruise around as far. And then I started hanging out with him. He lived on the south end of Tom's River where the south ends where our downtown is and stuff. And there's like actual spots. So like I eventually made good enough friends with him that I started going over his house and stuff. And then I started riding like real spots. And it was like, he just put me on right away. He's like, yo, you ever ice pick a rail? Like, nah, I was like, all right, we're going to go to this little five stair rail. You're going to ice pick that. And then we're going to go to courthouse hubba. That's a stair hubba. And if you could ice pick the rail, you can get onto the hubba. And it was just like, damn, oh, street you know I mean? training sessions, dude. Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. It wasn't even like training though. I know. It was, like, yeah. it was just like being hyped it was so new that it was like, when you're a kid, you just want to do like the three things you can do every day at your street spots. Big time. If I yeah. can hit the hubba. I'm going to hit the hubba. Yeah. Like you're not just going to do one eighties with the bottom all day, you know, like, no. but also too, he kind of put me onto like criminal mischief, which was pretty new at the time. He put me onto the demolition video and stuff. And I'd seen street riding and stuff before, but I've never seen it to that level. Yeah. But growing up with my brothers and um, two of my friends in school, were skaters so i was like pretty well versed with like street skating and i was like yo people are doing this on a bike like i you know what i mean this is sick so it kind of opened up my whole world from like my trails my community center my couple spots on my end of tom's river to like you know everywhere has spots which is kind of what made me fall in love with street riding was like half of it's the riding and half of it's the journey and just like wandering around and seeing new stuff yeah <clears throat> that's dope Cause it, from what I, I was talking to Kevin Corrali and he was saying like, you introduced him to street way back in your due tour contest days when you guys are both like 15, 16 or whatever. And he said your passion for it was, you know, unreal. And just like, that's, that's what you really wanted to do. So for sure. <laughs> is that, that's from, from the, from the jump, you were like, I, I think I love street riding the most. No, I mean, and, I was always like, I was always kind of like down to ride whatever. Nice. But it was like, it was partial that and then partial that my best friend who was like the only like other like super diehard rider in Tom's River was like, bro, I tried taking him to trails and he tried to jump my trails like he was jumping a rail hop. Like he was like, <laughs> you've never jumped in your life. Like you just don't even know. It's like a foreign world. It was so funny. So I was like, all right, he always wants to ride street. He's always down to ride. Like we're going to ride street. That's his shit. Like I like oh, yeah. it too. What sticks out in your mind? I mean, the ice pick down the handrail, what? What's like an early street trick that you got on a spot that you can remember? Uh, we hit this shady curve wall. Nice. And like, the, the curve wall was like made of these bricks and it had like, um, like the edges stuck out so you can only hit a piece of it. And it had like a bunch of holes in the bricks. So it always pinch you and give you flat tires. But I remember like me and him riding this on the side of route nine Jersey, which is like basically like a highway. 
just like trying to learn her falls in someone's front yard like <laughs> it's so ridiculous it's not like their front yard but it's like the entrance way to the neighborhood still yeah just like i don't know so funny compared to like the spots we ride now like yeah just being it's a grown like man. the pure the pureness of being a kid and just like finding a curved wall is like oh my god this is a crazy curved wall but it's dog shit compared to what yeah. what what you ride now it's yeah fun. i mean if we were if we were there now i'd have to hit it for like nostalgia yeah yeah like you know and then like i started traveling and i turned pro kind of a weird way so I won, um, Jamie Bestwick had a contest and my dad was, a. my dad grew up kind of poor, but he was a surfer and he like lived on the beach for a while and stuff. And like, all he wanted to do with his life was surf other people's beaches. So when I got into BMX, he was like really cool about like, yo, you, you like, do you want to go to this skate park? Do you want to check this out? Like, you know, to yeah. like, do this. So I wound up going to, um, a contest that Jamie Bestwick was throwing at uh, the Flow Skate Park, which shortly became like I think the best skate park I ever rode. That park had so many options, and just had like the sickest scene, just super core raw BMX stuff. But um, I wound up winning like the I think it was like fifteen to eighteen class, and I think I won like a frame and a couple other things. And then um, I also won a free spot into the pro contest. Nice. So. I got to compete against the pros and my dad coming from the surfing world. He's like, once you like compete in a pro contest, you can never, ever go back. Huh. He's like, you kind of get like blacklisted for that. So that's essentially how I became like a pro. Huh? What do you mean you get blacklisted for that? Once you can just like, you like, you don't like go back to the amateur circuit after True, you ride yeah. a pro contest. You know what I mean? You're like, what's up with this dude? Like, yeah he's, he's sandbagging he's yeah. fried it's just like i had no business being there anyway and he's like i wanted to go back but he's like if you go back it's like kind of weird so then you just pro from there on out yeah yeah and um i mean i was already getting like hooked up by nike and stuff and like but yeah i had no business like going i remember i went to the metro gym and i was just like dude this is like too much for me like this is <laughs> like i have no business being out here these guys are like fucked and I did good in the contest by like, you know, being like doing little kid tricks and not missing anything. Yeah. But like dudes were out there like changing the game in front of my face. Just like <laughs> it was like the year I think uh Davis Otto did a tail up to Gap to Rail at Metro Jam. It was just like Damn, yeah. I was psyched I jumped to the rail. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a totally different level. But yeah, then like when I was traveling, like um my dad wound up passing away like really shortly after that. So um, I started traveling a lot on my own, which kind of opened me up to like riding cities when I was at contests. Nice. Yeah. Where I was like, just like, you know, a ratchet little 15, 16 year old kid that would always have trouble getting in a hotel room because hotel rooms won't let kids in. Yeah. And then so you're I was just like, out there sending oh. it yes dude sending it for sure and like have my mom on the phone arguing with him like well what do you want my son to stay on the fucking street like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hell yeah mom and then i'd get into my room and i'd be like calling corali with my little like janky cell phone like yeah let's go ride like hell the content yeah. wasn't enough and yeah i don't know it was just like it was a fun thing i remember like introducing a lot of those dudes to it dude that's so red that's and yeah shit i'm sorry to hear about your dad that sucks yeah uh, thank you but i imagine that like lit a fire under your ass because his influence from like the surfing and that travel bug like probably impacted you a bit no yeah for sure and like i don't know he just taught me a lot of stuff that like i remember like for instance like i went to the cerebral skate park when it first opened and like he just knew that like there was like the bike skate animosity and he was look like i'll show you how to like handle this stuff he went over like made friends with like the older skaters was like drinking beers with them and shit and the next thing you know i was like friends and like you know integrated bmx into the scene and just like kind of yeah. learn that like if you're cool to people people will be cool with you yeah dude. and like with speed riding you know you learn a lot of like a lot of your job is talking people into letting you do what you're gonna do for real dude yeah. and like you get really good at it you know like yeah shit well yeah dude i can't imagine like that happens and then you kind of grow up fast but also not not grow up you're riding bikes and traveling and shit but grow up in a sense you know what i'm saying yeah 
I grew up in a sense of like how to take care of myself and like what to do and what not to do. And I could have went a lot of paths in this time. Yeah. But like, luckily I was so focused on BMX. Like the only thing I really wanted to do was ride to the That's point insane. that I could go out to a contest and be like, dude, this university is not too far. We got to make it to the university and like, just make it just this whole planned trip. But, um, I was also really lucky too. Like a lot of people kind of like looked after me. Like I remember, um, like Jerry Batters and Vans and stuff like would always be like, you need anything? Like, you know, and like just people would just knew, like I was like literally a 15 year old kid in like a city by myself, like just Dude. running amok. Just like, <laughs> what a life, man. That's so yeah. nuts. At, yes. I mean, I'm, and how I'm trying to picture like what level you were at at 15. I don't even, I have like a visual of you doing like a 900 at some yeah. skate, skate or not skate, but it's a skate park contest. I forget which one do tour metro jam maybe but yeah. like the like when did you get good because it is it um, all you know what i mean i would say i probably to me i got good when i was like 18 okay i got kind of like man strength and like kind of could really control the bike but like yeah like at the age of 15 when i was riding these contests i was like a like i i could bring kind of like a metro jam style to like the proper park contests which was like I would kind of ride it back then the same way I did then where I'd like be trucking off Euro gaps and like manually and dropping off stuff and like transfer lines with fives and stuff. And I don't know. I was really influenced by like, like a bunch of people like had like a lot of like the spinny techie Midwest stuff. Cause I loved Kevin Porter, mm -hmm. but also like grew up on van stuff and loved Aiken. So like I had all these different influences and different sides of my riding that were like, I don't know. Which so beautifully comes together now after just, I just like rewatched some of your parts on YouTube and it's just like the perfect blend of like, dude, the, the truck, the 360 bar spin table over the spot in New Mexico is just like everything together, you know, spin, yeah, thank tech, you. spin tech, but like beautiful trail trick. Um, yeah. it's, it's cool to see like Kevin Porter, Mike Aiken, and then whoever else you were influenced by all come together into what you're doing now. And it's like more than just being able to do the shit. It's like what you choose to do on what spots. It's like, um, I think I said it before, but like you learn all your tricks when you're young. And then as you get older, you become like a painter and you're like, I'm going to do this trick on this yeah. spot. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. So yeah. good we're, job, Garrett. <laughs> I appreciate the kind of words, but like, yeah, if we were yeah. artists, spots are our canvases. And that's why yeah. street artists look for spots is because like, an artist without canvas is, isn't going to paint He'll probably be right. bored out of his mind. And like, I don't know, there's, there's nothing like first time spot hype to me. Like the first time you go to a really good spot is going to be the absolute best experience you'll have there. For real. Everything after that will be toned down due to you've been there. Yeah. So it's like, if you can create that, I always believe that like I can make like my dudes get clips pretty easy and stuff just by like, even if they're like bored with riding or like whatever they're going through, they're sore. Like if you take them to something good, like all these dudes love it, they will start yeah. beating the shit out of it. <laughs> Big time. And you've been in San Diego for 12 years. Have you, do you have you run out of new spot? I ran I out of new spots like eight, nine years ago. <laughs> I, I do a lot of traveling to film now. I go up to LA a bunch and like the IE, which is like Riverside, San Bernardino. IE, what did you say? uh yeah the inland empire oh okay I, yeah i'm I'm still learning california talk dude yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's yeah it's just like yeah. that end of california that's dope um, there's a that area is really old so it's full of spots i believe it it's just california in general dude like just driving around even spots that aren't spots are spots compared to like being out here i look at yeah. something that's like at the walgreens that i'm going to and it's something that we would drive 20 minutes to ride here you know it's yeah yeah, yeah. why does california have spots like that why mm -hmm. do you think um, because it's hilly. So anything built on the coast is going to have hill is going to have reasons for them to make run ins to houses, you know, whatever. And then yeah. they do a lot of spray asphalt because it's so dry out here that um, everything breaks apart. Yeah. So that makes like, sense. It's change like in elevation. Yeah. The change in elevation causes spots. I think yeah. that's why, like, Phoenix is like, we we're just out there. Like, Phoenix is a little bit harder for spots. It is. Yeah. Really, it's really flat super right. flat and it's so big in mass but like everything you kind of find has almost been discovered yeah 
it's like uh, there's it's not, very rare like, it's we haven't had like, a new spot pop up in a hot minute yeah <laughs> I mean, it seems like they are doing some developing. Like, I don't know, like we wrote ASU and stuff, and like that's the stadium rails were new. Those are sick. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, they're making new stuff, but it's like it's not um, it's not as endless with like the amount of areas that are elevated. Like, yeah, California or like Salt Lake City is like full of spots because it's so elevated. And Dude, I've never like, gotten a ride in Salt Lake City. I'd love to. Denver is so sick for spots too. Like just yeah, Denver. Yeah, Denver's amazing. Yeah, pedaled around with Dutt a little bit and was like, oh my god, this place is incredible. It's like a yeah. dreamland, and the weather's yeah. so bomb. Yeah, um, people people that were born there are very lucky. Yeah, and you don't know what you got until you it's gone. Yeah. Move somewhere else. Like, uh, where were we though in your career? You're 18. Pick uh, it up yeah, from there. So like what happens 18- next, Garrett? 18 is like i feel like um i'm gonna say props bio Nike so part, Stu, just, Stu just told me about this but i yeah. want to hear it from your perspective how did the props bio come up uh i forget i think he asked me he asked me somewhere maybe it was that contest because he i heard i got tagged in it but i remember him asking me and we're like oh dude like i was a props kid like i was like oh hell yes let's do our props bio but also too like never really did that kind of thing where like I was just gonna go fly out and stay with someone I didn't really know like I think my context was still was like hey uh do you want to do a props bio like yeah that'd be sick like all right cool like I'm gonna go back to filming the content <laughs> <laughs> like okay like you know like right, yeah I see you in a couple weeks fly out and stay at my house yeah it was sick too um yeah I just literally went out there and that was kind of like my first experience of like the professional side of filming we're like every day einstein bagels that's stew shit <laughs> and then he had a macbook full of spots and you're sitting there like eating our bagels and stuff and like we're just like going through like picking where we're gonna ride like everything Same. was street riding before me like for me it's like i grew up riding philly philly's full of spots so you just pedal around and you like you're just gonna run into stuff where this was like oh i can actually work on this project like make my own puzzle yeah and like i can build the steps you know what i mean like i could ride here which would warm me up to do this to go to this rather yeah. than like riding around aimlessly you're just gonna like pop up and stuff and it's like pull the trigger don't come back you know yeah but uh yeah it was really fun you know just like i man i picture that time it was like just listening to like Merciful Fate and stuff and Stu's uh, van just <laughs> cruising around in Austin. And I was like such a BMX fan at the time. He was like always telling me stories about them filming Anthem 2. Nice. And, like, I used to love Sean Burns. I still do. Um, but I was like, yeah, like what do you do here? And he's like, you know, he like nose bonked off this. And I'm like, yo, how how did he know? Like it's the one yeah. nose bonk that lands in the curb cut. Yep. Like I just remember him showing that to me and being like, how did he do that like <laughs> and like you know it's everything was so much more elusive than like sean burns was like like no one knows what this dude you know what i mean you really yeah. don't know what you're doing i just seen a picture with him with Stu, so i know he did some crazy shit yeah this is pre-social media the props by a like 2000 yeah like, like instagram's not a thing yet yeah, yeah i think like facebook was a starting to become a thing i believe yeah maybe myspace like, yeah myspace shit, was definitely dude. popping wild uh and just to like be able to work on a project with Stu, who has all the bmx history in the world like from 1995 he's been putting out full lengths which yeah. is so crazy dude like yeah i i, I mean i i've known Stu's a legend but talking to him i was like damn dude like you've done yeah. so much and he's still going he, it's so sick yeah. and he's such a good dude and he has like bmx's best interest with everything he's like the perfect dude to be working in our industry for that long because he is just such a like hard worker with everything he does like big time uh, even even like on those trips like i can remember like getting multiple clips and being like like yeah like i don't know i feel like it's like a good day and he's like what did you think you like would want to go back to that one thing or do you want to go another day like i feel like that would really work for your part blah 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 like he was just like on it very in tune with like dude like let's make this the best you can like you know like he kind of could see that these couple add-ons would really add to, um, you know, the projects. Yeah. And he made it sound so casual. He was like, yeah, Garrett is super chill. Just take him to a spot and he'll figure something out. And just, uh, you know, 
it's easy. And I was like, is it? Is it? Is that? Was it? Was it that easy? I mean, dude, new spots is always kind of like, I don't say easy. You know, you're definitely trying, but it's easier. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. if I'm trying to film her on home right now, it's like, all right, like things I've not done because a specific reason, maybe something I don't like about the spot or uh, the health risk involved. Yeah. And like a new area is like, oh, I haven't even like, or a new project. And like, I have, I have no switch whips. Like, oh, yeah. I, easy. I can get on the board. You know, you can kind of build your confidence like that. It's like the, the ending process of a video part is always the hardest. Mm-hmm. Because you the beginning, don't want to repeat the tricks. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say on the board. I love saying on the board. Like whenever yeah. somebody gets a clip, I'm like, he's on the board. Yeah. Let's go. You yeah. know, like. Yeah. I always joke around with uh, Matt Clausen with that. Like anytime we do like our trips, he's like, he's like our assistant TM. He's more of a TM than me. Hell yeah. Like, he's the yeah, boy, You're on the board. <laughs> you're on the board. There we go. There we go. Like he's like the, like, oh, like the super supportive dude. We're like. Yes. Um, I'm more like, yeah, dude, that was sick, you know? Like, yep. We should talk about Clausen and his, uh, well, awesomeness, first of all. I was going to say the knee thing, but I mean, yeah. that's pretty buck. We don't have to talk about that. Uh, I, I, let's talk about the props thing for a second. What what sticks out in your mind is like a scary memory in that video part, or like what did you have to work the hardest for, if anything? Um, that nosebone bar I did where yeah. I dropped down, that thing, I broke a pair of forks in half. <laughs> Shit. Like which, I broke which way them, half? Like uh, so I broke them at the the bend of the fork, not even on the weld, straight in the middle. Yikes! Just one of the times it just snapped, and then my like tire stopped moving and like pitched me forward. So I was like, I don't know, I was riding like I think Odyssey race forks or something. Probably I should have been those. Like, <laughs> should have been on like beefier forks or something. Yeah, but yeah, that was like I remember going back to that spot being like like i really want to do this but this is gonna suck and i was like you know it's like one of those spots where it's on a hill mm -hmm. any spot where you're taking a really big drop and the ground isn't absolutely flat it's gonna spit whatever side you're landing on the high side of the hill is gonna spit that side of your body off every time yeah because the impact's being more dispersed to that end than the other side right. so it was like one of those situations where like dude i had to do it so many times that day and i couldn't hold on and then I broke the forks and was like, went straight to Empire, got new forks, and like it was a little bit too late to go back. And like the next day, I was like, "Yeah, you want to go back and do that?" I was just like, "Dude, this is hectic." Right? <laughs> but I wanted to do it, you know. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know. That's the fun thing about filming. Like sometimes, like you're looking at it, and you're like, I don't know if I really want to put myself through it. But then you get this crazy dopamine release when you get that and you're like, this is why we ride. Like, this yeah, is for real. Bitter. And it's like that high can either spark you to continuing filming and like any bad day can make you like contemplate retiring. <laughs> yeah, for real, dude. Like, I'm I can't do this. I'm done. Dude. <laughs> this is the worst shit ever. <laughs> when was your last retirement day, Garrett? Ooh, I've had plenty of them. Um, working on this new part, you know, like I'm always trying to get that next thing. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of tech tricks that were pretty hectic. I had one this weekend uh, where I was at a spot in Santa Ana trying to get this trick and I was getting dumb close. But the trick I was doing was just really hard to control all the like rotating weight. And like, I think like five skaters from LA came to skate the same spot. Is it, it was, the like, little rails by the parking garage? Did I see this? No it's, like, no, it's like a little outledge thing in Santa Ana. A bunch of people. Okay. Dak has a very notable trick on it. He did like the sickest shit. He did um backwards grind, fakie turn down, fakie manual, drop into the street. Nice. Yeah. Okay. One of my favorite Dak clips. Um, but yeah, like the skaters were super, super cool, but they came up from LA and they like wanted to skate the spot too. So it's just like super hectic, just like trying to do this trick, skaters trying to skate it. They wound up giving me a, like a bit of a window and I wound up getting it. But like, Hell it's just, yeah. you know what I mean? It's hectic. Like you're so close, but now you want to keep going. But like the skater is kind of distracting you. Mm -hmm. because you got to get into that blackout zone to like do those level of tricks for myself. Yeah. You wound up making friends and the kids were super cool and shit. But like in the moment you have those moments where you're like, I came so close. I pulled Tony up here. It's 90 degrees. 
I put an hour and a half into it. My clothes are literally wet. Like I went in the pool, like I sweat that much. And I'm like, we're not going to get the trick. And I'm kind of like messing these kids filming day up from out. <laughs> it's, like, it's, just like, <laughs> it's just like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're in such a fragile state of mind that like the negativity breeds into this crazy cycle. Then you get out of your head and you're like, oh no, like we're all after the same shit. Yeah, that's funny. Try, I'm picturing the, the skaters like not knowing who you are and just this dude's not landing a trick. He's like, wow, this biker sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah, he definitely like, he's tr- just got close, but it looks <laughs> fucking hard. Need them stars to align. Oh, uh, shit. I can't wait to see There's... what that trick is, dude. No, yeah. no. On that outlet. I got, I, got, I got a nice couple bodies on it and stuff. And like, you know, just a couple like, slams were like you're just lazy and limp and being like oh am i done do i still have it in me or do i keep going like and then you see it through and you got it yeah Yeah, dude it is the worst feeling to like give up on something but also there's a point where it's like all right cut your losses and move on that's a tough one to like navigate you know like yeah and as you've gotten older i'm sure you've been through enough situations that you can kind of help the homies the younger dudes like hey maybe do you do that do you help them or coach you know yeah, at the I mean, spot yeah it's a weird I'm way to put it but i wouldn't say the coach but i'm definitely like trying to help in any way i can whether it be like making sure they have water um giving them wax modifying the spot if need be you know whatever i need to do but also being like you know today's not your day man there's always tomorrow like for real yeah because, like seriously don't feel pressured but it's, it's hard for us because like our group of dudes really likes to like push to that next little level yeah which is like if we all just refined it back a little bit we'd probably just get clips really easy (laughs) or we're always pushing for that next thing and it's like the hardest most stressful thing on you but it's Mm -hmm. also the most hurting yeah big time i mean i learned how to work everyone's different and like tony knows it too that you work with everyone different like some people need to be told that you got it some people need to be told like a little bit of confidence like yo like one step at a time. Don't get too ahead of yourself with it. You know, like yeah. start thinking about the part you're fucking up on rather than the first part of the trick. Yeah. Yeah. Some people need to be told that they suck and they should quit. <laughs> yeah. Like me now. And I mean, they help me too, man. They're like, we're, we're like definitely family oriented where it's like, there's never a session where like someone's like, man, I hope he doesn't get this shit. Like, yeah, we're definitely. all like, we're, we're just like, yo, like you got it. You got it. And then like, I think people get a lot in their heads about not landing the trick and people wanting to go film. And like, anytime our group of dudes are together, we're just like, dude, I'm so glad I don't have to ride right now. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> real. Please keep trying your trick. Yeah, dude, we're all we're, chilling, we're, man. We got a party in this parking lot. Going over here. We are <laughs> totally cool not going to the kink rail. Like. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the best. And from, uh, I think Clawson was telling me that sessions with you guys is like, it's kind of super chill and then somebody goes in and then all of a sudden it's like game on, you know, yeah, everybody's, yeah. everybody's mean, going in. Cause all of our dudes are so mellow and just easy going that it doesn't always like, it's not like people just jump out of the van and want to ride. Yeah. It's like, we got a good stuff. Someone will be into it. Once someone starts riding it, you'll see the values in the spot and then sparks ideas, you know? Yeah. I've been on lots of trips where people be like, Oh, I don't know about this spot. And then someone rides and they're like, Oh shit, I could probably do that. You know? Yeah. Like, you just need someone to kind of like break in the ways you can use the spot feeds off each or other. like you know sometimes people get in their head they don't want to be the hungry one on the trip mm-hmm. uh did you ever go through that like what was your first experience as like a team trip when you were younger I'm trying to think my like first team trip um the first like real trip i ever did to like film was i flew to la to film with nigel and Mark Losey, because Nigel nice. was the other dude. He was the other dude on Nike, and he got yeah. on right after me. And, uh, yeah, like, never met Mark Losey in my life. Knew he was, like, one of the photographers from Ride from following the magazine. Mm-hmm. He literally picked me up from LAX, and we went and rode street literally all day. And then what he a crew. You, yeah. Losey, and Nigel. That's good. Yeah. And, like, me and Nigel at the time were so quiet. Like, I just remember being, like, both just like not knowing how to act and like not knowing what to do and like yeah should we keep filming do we keep riding do you like do you want us to do everything we can do at every spot like, we're only <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah. like we're trying to figure we're figuring it out we're very new to the game yeah and but uh 
that's part of the part of the process so that's like one of my favorite things that i got out of bmx is just the the shit that you learn on trips and like the social things that you learn the like professional shit you learn it's it's the best what what about after that what was your first like i guess so you're on nike but what about bike sponsor did you do any like premium trips that you can remember or no i don't think we ever did yeah Yeah. no so like they made they made that video before um before i got on and by the time i got on i think that they were like more or less just kind of like because premium is owned by haro and it's all like contest shit yeah which was kind of like are they your first frame sponsor Sorry, yeah, to or yeah. no, actually, I wrote for Redline right before that. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. Redline Garrett, dude. Shit. Yeah, I always forget about that. I had that um the black and green device. Yeah, dude, that thing was sick. And then you had the the punk. I remember the whole kit: the longer hair bandana. Yeah. You and JJ both with the bandana. Yeah. I remember oh, being yeah. so confused, dude. Who the fuck? These two. Which these two looking. One, it's funny too because <laughs> we look like nothing alike, but like. I don't know. I guess in like VX footage and stuff, it's like it is a little harder to tell. Like, well, I mean, like similar the same style. Kit. One's right, one's left, one's five eight, one six two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. JJ was taller when I first met him in person. I was like, oh shit, you're taller in person, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. one of the taller BMXers for sure. I love JJ. He moved out here for a bit, and then I got to meet him and work with him, and he's he's the shit. Super chill. Yeah. Like, yeah, he knows good head on his shoulders. He's got the best head on his shoulders, the nicest, funniest person, but also like low key, one of the funniest persons to like people to talk shit with. Like he is so funny, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Miss, miss good old JJ. Does he live out with, with you guys now in San Diego? Where is he? No, he lives right up the street. Nice. Um, he lives with his girlfriend right now. Good for him. Yeah. He's gone through it in the past couple of years. Yeah. For sure. Uh, uh the, 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 where were we? Team trip, learning stuff. Team trip, Premium, um, Redline Garrett. Think, honestly, like my first real like, cause we, we, I'll jump back. We did a lot of uh like individual trips. My buddy Wade Young, he filmed for like Shook and stuff a little bit. Yeah, I remember him. So um, I never met him, but I remember his name. He was always big on organizing trips. He was a rollerblade filmer. He was the rollerblade filmer. Yeah, my fucking guy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he was like, so he would phone for Shook and stuff. And as we were getting a little bit older, like we were all kind of getting into street riding. Ken Aida came out and it was kind of influencing like, oh, this is sick and go ride cities and stuff. Wade would always like organize these little trips we used to call Christmas trips where all of us would like ask our families for money. We put all the money in the gas and we would try to get out of like our area, like the tri-state area and go somewhere's a little bit warmer and film for like Christmas. I like nice. that's kind of how I met everyone in the BMX industry. Like Mike Hoder came and like, and I used to show people around my area too. Cause Tom's River actually has a couple like good spots, mm-hmm. but it's just really limited. But I remember like I met Mike Hoder when I was like 15, he came to my first ever party I had. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Mike Hoder's at yeah. your first party ever. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's Man, I have so many. I have so many fucking funny stories from that night. But can we t- give me one, dude? Let's pause on that that party for a second. Fresh party just ever. Having Mike Coder just like at my house and like him acting kind of crazy and like just trying to like tone him down, but being so intimidated by his size, <laughs> like all these kids, like. <laughs> A little kid like me that like literally is just starting to hit puberty. I was already a small kid, and then like full grown man Mike Hoder just like <laughs> shooting down vodka and just like yo dude like chill. <laughs> and he's screaming and shit, being Hoder. Yeah. That's great. But he's like the most he's like the most kind, loving person in the world. I love Mike. Yeah, Hoder. He's of course. Friend. That's great, dude. Oh man, I'm trying to yeah. <laughs> that that's a funny visual just hey man can you please chill <laughs> yeah they're just like yeah like just doing funny sh- like you know just i don't want to put on blast but just like share like yo dude like <laughs> all right so these christmas trips what was the shook that you that you and jj were in or was it you and jj uh, or, no it's just me um that was shook like totally like totally that, yeah and that was um i think that was 2007, I believe. The summer of 2007, I went and stayed with uh, Mike Hoder. Say it again. So we phased into it perfectly. Yeah. Um, I went and stayed with him in Seattle. And 
yeah, we just, I think we went out there, me and Wade went out there and filmed for like a week. Hoda showed us around. We kicked it with him and his friend Zeb. His friend Zeb was fucking mm-hmm. out of his mind. <laughs> I don't think he even really rode, but like he said he wanted to get a clip for this video. And he like, I just picked a like an 18 or 19 stair rail, so loose, and <laughs> ran into these people's car but it was like mike hoder's dad owns a house and then he owns like some section eight housing right next to it yeah and this kid zeb was like hoder's homie and like he didn't come out riding with us the whole week we were there and then one day it was like i'm gonna get a clip today and he's like hoder's like dude you don't even have a bike he's like i'll just put pegs on your bike and he literally ice picks like an 18 stair rail this apartment complex like literally a block from mike hoder's fucking house and just blast this car it's in the video <laughs> And just the funniest shit. Hell yeah. Dude, I love dudes like that. I could never do yeah. that. Be like, yeah, I'm going to get a clip today. Yeah, just give me your bike and ice pick an 18 stair rail. That's nuts. Yeah. Was, like the whole situation was just so funny. Just kicking it with Hoder and like his hometown, kicking it like in between the houses he owned and the apartment complex. Because Hoder was like kind of like knew every single buddy in that uh, apartment complex. And we just yeah. be like, just posted up, just running into his life. It was like really fun. That's wild. Well, that's a cool trip to be on when you're young. You're like 33, 34. How old are you now? Uh, yeah, I just turned 33. 33. Yeah. So you you were 17 in 2007, no? Yep. Yeah. Shit. 17 year old hanging out with Mike Hoder in Seattle. That sounds bomb. Yeah. What uh What happens after that? Um, trying to think. I think after that was like the Nike video, and that was like kind of my first taste of like traveling globally yeah like where did you guys all go what was your favorite place from filming for nike writing on the wall writing on the wall i'm trying to think um it was sick to go to melbourne fuck yeah that's one of the two times that you went yeah yeah we went to melbourne uh we went to phoenix we got to meet smoker dave rest in peace yeah rest in peace he was he was really cool he showed us around he knew the spots very well um we went to atlanta atlanta i really liked atlanta atlanta's fucking rad we went there and like maybe november or something so it's already getting cold in jersey but the weather was so perfect there hell yeah i'm just like um atlanta is like a really easy city to ride did you guys all go together on these trips for the video like yeah was nigel oh, and yeah. spinner with you and yeah nigel spinner dennis me like every hell single yeah. trip and it was like dude these trips were super dope we had like usually like an rv to take us around and like i don't know we'd always stay at Proper. pretty nice hotels and eat really well like it was it was like a an a-list bmx uh nike trip. shit that's dope. yeah nike shit for sure is that how you got introduced to dennis or did you guys meet before that so i met dennis uh i met dennis at um there was like when metro jam stopped there was like another contest that filled in that was i want to say it was called something else but it wasn't metro jam and i met him there really briefly and i was like holy shit they like hired a really good kid <laughs> like he did uh i think he did like a triple whip or something at that contest dude you two are something else <clears throat> it's pretty wild every time every time the goat conversation comes up it's dennis and garrett I mean, who wins just real quick between you two in a game of bike dennis i guess dennis. it depends on what it's on it does depend <laughs> huh <laughs> Pretty sure I could smoke him on a flat rail, but I don't think I could hang in the trails. <laughs> dude, he's so good. It's nuts. Yeah. He's dude, he's crazy. Like the shit he does, I'm like, I don't even know if that's considered a trick or a stunt. Like you just like Yeah, dude. He's a stunt you rider. You're like, you don't even like I don't know, like he's just nuts. Like he's just so confident. Like I went out with uh Tony Tony filmed his van's part. Yeah. Uh Asa. Yeah. And like I went out with him a couple times and I was like, dude, me and him look at riding so much different. Like I believe just, it. Like, he would go to like a big spot and like I'm down to ride big spots too. But if I'm gonna ride a big spot, I'm gonna go through like every single trick I can do and get like warm to like the point I feel the best I possibly could. He would literally do like one hot bar, one eighty, sketchy switch one eighty, and the guard I'm ready and just fucking <laughs> handle some shit. I was like, <laughs> Dude, the audacity of you. You're crazy, right? <laughs> I wish I could see that shit in person, but I don't even know. Like, that's, uh, yeah. that's a whole his other riding, level. His riding's like bull riding. Like, it doesn't translate in video. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to actually be there and be like, you really just jumped to that rail right now. That is, like, 
Dude, like, nuts. <laughs> it's, a, it's 11 a.m., dude. Like, I'm still kind of like, I've been up for a few hours. My brain's still kind of like waking up. Yep. Dude, man, that video yeah. part is unbelievable. You said it's Asa? Yeah. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Asa? Yeah, Asa. Yeah, that's his son's yeah. name. That's a cool ass name because I've been saying it, Asaya, but it's a, uh, that video part is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, ass is every one of his. Yeah, for real. Uh, all right. So, Nike writing on the wall. That's a cool trip. Atlanta, Melbourne, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. I kind of I want to talk about Spinner. What was it yeah. like hanging out with Mike, Mike Spinner? <laughs> Dude, Spinner was fucking hilarious. All right, all right. When I think of Spinner, um, so I met Spinner with my dad at one point, and my dad drove us from a contest to a skate park. And there was a point where Spinner was like the Midwest, like kind of style rider where he's really tech. Yeah. And like, you couldn't get this kid off his bike. Like, I remember, like, me and my dad being ready to leave and him, like, still doing, like, foot jam double whips and, like, five cabs and stuff and being like, all right, dude, like, you know, it's been a long day. Maybe we should get out of here. But, all right, like, one more minute. He's like, just one more, one more. Yeah. But then, dude, he blew up and he turned into the contest rider, and he's, like, the only rider I've ever seen do the straight 180. And, like, <laughs> I could remember, like, maybe two or three years later being on trips with him and – uh this specific trip I'm thinking of, we're in Paris, and this fool is literally like on Facebook hitting on girls, trying to get a tour guide to get him Wi-Fi. When we're in like the projects of Paris, <laughs> and he's like asking, asking Mark Lewis, he's like, "Yo, like, you think like I can go to Australia and use my Nike budget to go to Australia? Like, I really want to fuck this girl." <laughs> <laughs> like, and he's the serious. Biggest born idiot. Like, <laughs> I could remember like Mark Lewis is the best team manager in the world. And he was always took really good care of us. And like, you could see he was clearly getting under his skin, but he had this, so much respect for him that he wouldn't really like just air out how he felt. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, dude, you're on a trip to Paris. You should be riding. Like, yeah. Be stoked you that you're here, man. Yeah. In like, Paris, he's like, can so I go to excited. Australia? I'm horny. <laughs> yeah. And we're, dude, we're riding like, I don't know, like we're the area of Paris we're riding is like that area with like all the banks that circle around us, a volcano. Mm -hmm. It's like, literally like you can't go to a cooler street spot yeah like the closest thing to a plaza you can find it's like it's just like where's the wi-fi got, got like seven spots yeah like this i could like it was just like the funniest situation and like uh me and dennis we were like super hyper younger kids at the time and i'm like pretty chill but when my energy spikes i can be like super ad add and adhd and shit and like Dennis is like me times 10. Like I always roomed with him and um, I've always roomed with Spinner and I can just remember like sleeping and him like waking me up, slapping me and like flipping me over and like, my bed and stuff. And like, I don't know, just so many good memories of just like literally driving. Uh, we used to just torture Mark Losey. <laughs> I believe and, like, it. We would like, we wouldn't even torture him like to be like a dick. We would torture him because we were filming with Glenn P.P. Milligan yeah and he he loved when we tortured him so he was just like just laughing the whole time we just like like i don't know marcos he was like scared of security guards uh, yeah i and can see be that. like security's coming security's coming security's <laughs> coming i'd be like who the fuck cares like i was like <laughs> and this time i was really like loose and like couldn't care less because i grew up riding philly and i was like dude like this is not a problem like we'll be yeah. fine worst comes to worst they're gonna tell us to leave like yeah just like i don't know just kind of picking on him and stuff but and then if you get giving... glenn laughing he's got that accent and that laugh dude like i would yeah. i would be doing whatever makes glenn laugh the whole trip too <laughs> yeah yeah and he's funny he's funny and so is nigel so if you get everyone in on it dude just picking on the gm it's just like that's the best the worst situation but we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it all the time we just do it sometimes yeah and well, i don't know everyone would give it to each other you know his family vibes that's the best dude i think uh i was just joking with somebody my love language is insults like just fucking, yeah for sure yeah talking shit with the boys is like the best yeah and you never go like below the belt but there's like a specific way you can insult people you yeah know? exactly some fun shit which actually i remember like learning the hard way of like oh that hurt my feelings and then yeah, just, yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> you kind of got yeah, a, hard you a little bit you don't call the fat kid fat you know yeah like, yeah <laughs> you joke around about a lot of shit but you don't go into people's insecurities yeah big time uh shit okay let's keep it keep it going tell me fuck your your career is insane let's we're on chapter two of 20 
Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot, and there's like a lot of it's been a long time since I thought about it, but there's so many stories I could probably come up with. Let's um, pause pause for one second and think about it. I, I got to pee okay. real bad. Brb. Okay, sick. We're and back. we're back. All right. So after that, I feel like the next thing was like I bought this VX and we started filming Deadline. Nice. That's what I was going to ask when Deadline began. Yeah. So Deadline's been around for a really long time. Um, you can see that. I don't know if you saw the birthday post, but there's a clip of my best friend, Corey, punching me in the head with all these different color bandanas. It's like 2003. 2003? Had... Yeah. So Deadline, Deadline has been around like forever. My my buddy, he just had like a, um, he had like a heat press and a computer and he's just like, his family always did like stuff on the boardwalk for like clothing companies and stuff. So he always like just made random little shirts and like, that's kind of like, it's been around since then. <laughs> yeah. Look at that baby dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am a little dude there, <laughs> but then it kind of like got, I guess it was never serious, honestly which is like the weird thing that we have like a serious video. Cause like when I bought the VX, it was like, all right, like we just made this Nike video. Like it's cool to have a camera. I need a camera. Yeah. So I bought myself a camera and I was like, all my friends are really good at riding. I want to showcase how good they are at riding, you know? And that's kind of how it all started. And then um, Ty wound up getting on board and Ty was like, a lot more serious about like the video side mm -hmm. so like my beginning like bro cam and shit he's like oh we can't use this like this isn't you know he was like a skate perception kid like he was very dialed with filming camera settings everything he knew all about it so, i haven't heard like, skate perception in so long that was the yeah, shit dude that was but you cool know I, I could like clearly remember filming ty and being like yo let me see what those can uh, colors are looking like and being like oh shit here we go <laughs> like intimidating he'd be like tough love but when i was set up ready you'd be like i'll run a little bit more blue but it looks good <laughs> but uh, you need one yeah, of those guys you need time yeah, no, i mean yeah. dude he literally made our filming jump up such a high level in a short amount of time by like really like teaching us and like we all wanted to learn you know what i mean like like anytime someone did a trick and it was gonna be hard for them i wanted to make it look as good as possible which is you know why yeah. people love to work with good filmers um but like, yeah, shortly after we started filming for the video and we did some trips, um, the most memorable one I can think of was our trip to Miami. I have uh, some really funny stories about that one. Like uh, we stopped in West Palm Beach to like link up with some of Ty's homies and stuff. And like picture an 18 year old me that's not legally allowed to rent a van, driving this van through Florida. We're in West Palm Beach, where Ty's from, and we uh, we park up at this church where he's like, oh, yeah, we ride downtown all the time. So we park and like literally a cop trails us into it. And we're already stressing because like there's like all kinds of shit in the car we're not supposed to have. And like we're to start taking our bikes out and the cops like uh, if you guys don't have bike lights, I'm going to give you guys all hundred dollar tickets for like bike lights. So I just, you know, I'd recommend you guys just leave we're like oh all right man like we'll leave or whatever and we're like wait a couple minutes like all right cops going like we're gonna go ride and like you know what i mean like yeah. we came all the way from jersey we're not gonna not ride so we got into this situation where it's like eight of us and um we're riding this little sea ledge in like one of the downtown areas or whatever and a cop kind of starts to pull up on us and my we all just kind of started to run <laughs> <laughs> and literally like i am not lying when i tell you this it turned into like a police chase with like their police like i almost got hit by a cop car running from a cop car damn like, took a corner with me and slid but like we ran for long enough that we got multiple cops chasing us you, you got know, up to bro. three stars yeah GTA we're, yeah, type shit. <laughs> yeah gta we were like yeah it felt like five like, i was like dude like this is crazy like i literally thought about getting off my bike at one point and just like trying to right. talk to the cop and just yeah. put my hands up and i just remember like all of us breaking up almost getting hit by a car cops freaking out and then um there was a parking garage that you couldn't get into i went into the backside 
And I remember like seeing the cop was trying to get her on the block and I just traveled up, took the stairs up and I was watching from like the eighth story. I remember just freaking out with all the homies and being like, dude, what are we going to do? We're all split up. And we're like communicating through our phones. And like, I literally thought about just calling the cops and like trying to talk to them. <laughs> and, like, hey, it's me. You're chasing me. Like, dude, this got so out of control. Like literally <laughs> like, I'm like, whatever cop gets us is going to like literally arrest us and like try to beat the shit out of us. Mm -hmm. Like it was going to be super rough. So I was like, yo, my idea became, I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk my bike back to the van. And if the cop comes to me, I'll be the one to talk to the cop and just explain the whole situation. And like, whatever happens, happens. So I'm walking and I'm like, this cop's going to find me, right? Make it like one block, two block, three blocks, whatever. Next thing you know, I'm at the van no cops so i'm like all right i guess i'll grab the van dude i grab the van and i go back to the parking garage i literally pick the dudes up get everyone into the car everyone's stressing my one homie threw up he was so nervous <laughs> and like we start driving out of town and a cop trails us and trails us and trails me all the way to the highway and we started leaving towards Miami and he just let us go. But I just remember being like, damn, the craziest situation of my life. Like, yeah, you got away. Holy like shit. we got away, but I was like, I feel like it would have just like, I can't believe the cop didn't pull us over. He might not have known if it was us. Cause like the band had tents on it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that was, shit. that was super hectic. And um, <laughs> that was, that was on our way to Miami. We're like, at this time we were all really young. So we went to Miami and we had two hotel rooms like right outside of like downtown and miles came and like, we just turned it into like this crazy party. Like, I believe it. Just, miles, you know what miles I mean? brings just, the party. Like, yeah. Just young kids that like we're went out here to film and it just got so sideways so quick. But dude, I was like <laughs> thinking about it on that time. That was like one of the funnest times ever. Like yeah. just being that free. I remember, um, we went to like I think a music concert or something. And I think I was like, oh, I'm not gonna drive the van. Like, I'm not gonna drive the van drunk. This is crazy. Augie's like, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> I remember uh like we went to the concert or whatever it was, and then we were leaving, and there was like obviously hella traffic to get out of it. It was like in a fairgrounds kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I remember he um almost drove the van. He was like, Oh, look, there's a way out here. I'm like, yo, 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 those are stairs, those are stairs. Oh, and shit. Then he, like, almost drove the van down these stairs into a, a like a barricaded area <laughs> it was so fun. just like that whole trip was so ratchet but honestly people killed it on that trip that's how the best trips are like especially yeah. when you're younger like the party yeah. slash wake up and still get shit done which, well yeah you're like yeah. you're vibing off of last night and that rolls over into the next day which yeah. creates that spark yeah what about you and riding hungover? Can you do it? I'm sure uh, you can. I did. I did for a long time. So like, even like, dude, a lot of X games and shit over the years, like I would just go out and party. Yeah. Like part of it would just be because like, I don't think I personally handle like the pressure and all that shit very well. And it's just like, mm -hmm. even though it's so chill, it's still just like, I don't know. You don't think about it this way, but like, all right, tomorrow at, you know 12 p.m you're gonna do your hardest tricks yeah blah, blah 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 and it's just like it's a lot to sleep with so when i was younger i would just like go out and party and just try to never even think about it and then just show up and it would really kind of help me yeah but then there's a couple of years i was like all right i'm getting too old for this i like cannot do yeah. <laughs> this is seriously crazy this is way harder i've heard simple session is like that like it's party until 6 a.m and then some people don't sleep and they compete the next day. Yeah. Uh, I think between the riders, we'd say that if you didn't go out, you're cheating. <laughs> nice. So there's like an unfair advantage because everyone was trying to just ride. It was just like, dude, this guy's trying to win. Hard. <laughs> Look at this try hard going to sleep. Yeah, dude. Simple, oh, I mean, yeah. simple session isn't like that kind of contest, mm -hmm. I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like simple session, the reason it was big, it was like an exposure thing. Yeah. I was like, go there, get your couple clips, get in those videos and stuff. And then like the contest, like, I guess it matters, but it's more or less like a, it's like a party festival thing. Yeah. Like Swamp Fest or something, you know? Yep. Which is dope. Simple yeah. Session's huge. I, one of these, one of these years I'll get out there.
Um, yeah, you should definitely go if you've never been. Yeah, it's definitely a good time, especially if you're friends with a lot of the guys and stuff like you are. Yeah, hundred percent. Party time. Let's go. That's. I'm a little old, but let's go party. Yeah. <clears throat> Might wake up feeling rough. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll go party and then I'll fly home immediately. <laughs> like, yeah. all right, screw this. Wake up I'm with out. anxiety and be like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Right, I'm never, I'm never going on a trip again. <laughs> oh man. Dude, this last trip that I went out and stayed in San Diego with uh, Matt and Case was my first like BMX trip in a couple of years. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, sleeping on a couch, the whole thing. It's, yeah. It's fun. It gets though. harder as you get older. Yeah. I'm like, it's, I could it's go good, for though. a bit. It toughens you out. Yeah, it sure does. It, it reminded me like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is this is where we're coming from. I forget. Yeah, we've came a long way. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you start taking it for granted because I've been traveling and staying in nice hotels and shit and like, really comfortable beds and pure darkness yeah. no noise and this trip i was like okay this is it you know i love it uh all right so deadline miami trip um what do i want to know about deadline i guess and that's interesting that ty came in and made made the like elevated the filming dude yeah. Ty's so good i've sweated ty since like the og ty federal videos absolutely that's my guy one of yeah. the best I'd say the most uh, official video part router of all time. Yeah, pretty fucking like, epic. Like he's like kind of known just for that, and he's really made like one hell of a career out of it. And Big like, time. Stayed around for a lot of years. Like there's, if you look at it, like when I was growing up, like I don't know, a lot of my favorite pros were like phasing out like 25. Yeah, for real. And How so, old is Ty? Uh, he'd be 33. Nice. Yeah. Shit, we're all the same age. Yep. Yeah. Ty's uh, just come with me. So you were born in 1990 then? Right? Yep. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's go. Good year. Yeah. Good year. <laughs> uh, what's shit just left my brain? Um, I think the next thing oh. you talk about is um, like Tony kind of came on board when we moved to San Diego. And so deadline, this is like similar time period. Well, real quick, is does Ty have footage? Is he working on something? So... Ty was working on still searching with Josh Harrington. No, Tony. not not back then. Right now. Oh, uh, he's got a little bit of footage right now. Nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He's work. He's working. He's got like maybe five clips or something for the new project. Hell yeah! I'm excited to see that. All right. Yeah. But yeah let's it's back, Ty. Back I'll kill him no further. Of course. Boy goes in. Um. Okay. So yeah, still searching and search, dude. And search was fire. That's. Anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah, pick it up. Where's the story going? <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, it's it's. I'm gonna say we skipped around so much. I'm yeah, like, I know. It's hard to pick up, but I'm like, I guess if we're talking about deadline, I guess like the next thing would be like, you know, we did these trips. Ty would always come and stay with me. People would come and stay with me in Jersey, and we ride Philly and New York a bunch, just because like where I was located, I'm like only an hour from each of them. But then the video really did start to pick up when we moved and got the house in California, and um. You know, Colin would come out and stay with me uh, on like Christmas vacation and stuff. And we had like a proper filmer. So I think like the video actually started to take a lot more shape. And then like I had pretty much at the time enough footage to make a video. But it was like kind of like like some of it was dated and some of it wasn't filmed up to like Tony's style filming, you know, like, yeah perfect film clips so we kind of refined it back down and started working from there um i yeah, it was like it's crazy because it seemed like it took a really long time but like it all I'd say like it was maybe like a year and a half of us in california that thing was done nice when it's game time and you put everybody together with the filmer yeah. it doesn't take that long I, yeah and we we had um we had two trips to barcelona too i kind of forgot to mention those and you know we we had really good time on those trips and um it's funny you say these cities and i can just like picture the clips in my head like as soon yeah, as you yeah, say yeah. it i'm just like yeah, i know yeah. exactly what you're and talking those, about. those trips were like a lot like the miami trips like just people were so out of their minds and young at this time and like we just didn't know how to act dude yeah i fuck man like the first deadline trip i put us up in a pretty nice hotel and one of my homies got uh super drunk my one of my best friends brian carter and he threw a piece of furniture out the window <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you yeah, yeah. 
and dude, yeah. And then we went to a hostel and then someone else decided to get really drunk. And um, if you ever stayed in a hostel, especially in different countries, they give you like a locker for your like super important valuables. This fool got super drunk and pissed all over the locker with people's like passports. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, so out of control. And like, I think at the time, maybe I was like 17 turning 18 or 18 turning 19. It's like trying my best to keep people in check. But like yeah. also on my own, like fun too. And like, just being like, dude, this is crazy. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. You, but there are so many good stories. Yeah. Yeah. You can't like. I would, if I, I mean, obviously you wouldn't trade that shit for the world. Like that just, no way. the homie pissing on a locker. It's like, if you could tell him not to, maybe, but Dude, it's like, it's good for the like memories. Own CKY or something. It was so mm -hmm. ridiculous. I'm just like, dude, like. Like, uh, when, what was going on during the fireworks for your intro? Oh, so when we lived in Jersey, we always used to just play with fireworks, like, and stuff all the time. Like I'd be sleeping or whatever. I'll get thrown in my room. I'll throw him in his room or like. <laughs> it's kind of like what we do like i don't know it's like yeah. augie's house is like super ratchet it's um it's like so i'm from tom's river and tom's river is like considered central jersey and then a couple exits up it gets to be like south jersey and like within lacy township and lacy townships like opens up a bit more to like the suburbs where like you can do you can have like a bigger ramp in your yard you can play with fireworks it's not as big you know what i mean it's not as big yeah. of an issue and stuff so that that was uh Augie's, I believe it was his uncle's house. Nice. And it was they were super chill. Like, you know, as long as if we broke anything, we'd pay for it and stuff. Like, do whatever you want. You guys are paying the rent for it. It's fine. That's 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 real. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You want like, you would put fireworks in your room? Fuck it. You're paying yeah. rent. I mean, he let us build a bowl in the garage. That's dope. Yeah, like that. we had this like, you know, just picture an eight foot garage, very small. We had a little four foot tranny bowl with vert walls all the way up to the ceiling and like the only way you can get in is you had to duck through a little hole sick like Hell yeah. pretty much bowled out as humanly as much as possible yeah that's dope uh, what yeah, do you like a good old bmx house that makes me wonder do you like digging trails or building ramps or yeah out of those two Which, um when's the last time I you guess, dug i guess these days it's been a minute i used to go dig sometimes with the dudes at area 51 that was like john jennings trails Where's that? Um, it's in Beachwood, New Jersey, or Bayville. And it's just a little bit south. It's kind of like the midpoint between Tom's River and Lacey, where I wound up living with Augie. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I used to go help out there. And then going back, I had my own trails across the street from my house. I had a spot for a while. Nice. Um, but uh, I think woodworking for sure. Yeah, because that's what you got in the backyard, which I do want to talk about once we get back yeah. to present day, which is going to yeah. take a minute. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. How did you um, meet Augie? So, so there's two questions about Deadline Homies. Like, how did you meet yeah, Augie? Yeah. And then how did you meet Colin? Because I, I remember Colin, when I had the first footage I saw of him, and I was like, who the fuck is this? You know, like, how did, yeah. you, know, how did you guys link guy? up? Yeah. So I met Augie first. I met him through a mutual friend, my buddy Keith McLaughlin. Um, longtime rider. He was the older homie. He would always drive us around. Augie was, I guess, messing around a little bit too much in Staten Island. So his grandma sent him to South Jersey where life's a little slower and, you know, there's less things he can get in trouble with. So he wound up going to high school with my buddy Keith, who I rode with pretty much every day, which is how we all became friends. Nice. Had he, was he riding in Staten Island before he came? Oh, yeah. Augie was already like of gun like augie came into our little crew and was like he was the one it was like Hell the chosen yeah. one like he could like <laughs> flip whip and like front flip and like Sick. he could hang her rails he can do everything so he's good. Like the ultimate <clears throat> badass and then colin colin i wound up actually meeting at uh the incline club skate park huh and um uh, i i can clearly remember um there's had these super steep up ledges and I was trying to do Smith hard whips at the time, which Corey Martinez kind of just like broke out. And then I remember Colin coming up behind me and trying one. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck is this kid? <laughs> and then we started shooting the shit and he was cool as fuck. And I was like, that's kind of <laughs> how we became friends. And then he was like, I would say I met Colin when I was a bit older. I was maybe 17 or 18. And um, his main group of friends was kind of fizzing out in Hamilton, New Jersey. It's right by Trent. 
so he started coming down my way to ride and I already had like ramps in my house and stuff. And like, I had a new zone and he had a new zone. So we'd kind of just trade off. Like I'd go ride Princeton with him and then I would show him like OCC and Tom's river spots and stuff. And ride my ramps. Yeah, so you guys go way back. This is yeah. Like, yeah. All of us do. That's so dope. I, uh, yeah. like for, I don't know, for some reason with Colin, I thought like he was just, uh, I, I don't know why I thought he was from like one of the Carolinas and like you put him on, fiend and that was the beginning of con which is so stupid but <laughs> that's like the illusion that i had in my head of just like okay who's this calling guy that's fire though. yeah no the only reason you'd probably think that is because like when we all moved out to california colin went to college ah where, where do you go so, to college so, um i guess somewhere's right by his house but he went uh he's like uh i guess it's like to be a gym teacher yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard I heard something about like Colin. Yeah, it's like all like fitness stuff. Considering being a teacher or something. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he even out here, like I think till recently with the the Adidas thing and all that shit, like he was yeah. doing sub teaching. So like all of us were like, hell yeah, like dude, he's been so good for years. I remember telling Dennis like even when we were filming like the Nike video, like like dude, my buddy Colin is he's ridiculous. Like he can just he can do everything. Yeah, it's like so good yeah he's so good it was cool to see him like him and brad you know yeah. what i mean people that kind of been strung along by the bmx industry finally get that like big that endorsement breath of relief life. yeah yeah like, uh, okay their cool. life up a little bit yeah like, colin yeah. doesn't have to substitute teach in the schools he's riding on the weekend <laughs> yeah tactic if you get like a police report or something you know for real like that's gotta be stressful that is stressful um all right one two skip a few deadlines done Man, when when did deadline finish? 2013, 14? Uh, it was 13, yeah. 13. That was a good year. That's a damn good year. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> kind of like the end of the DVD chapters in BMX, I feel like. There was a yeah. lot of stuff that came out that year. Like, uh, Talk is Cheap came out that year. Yep. I think a couple other, like, big releases, but just all blends together mediocre at best might have come out the next year you know yeah, there you go that's a good one that's a good one you know that's a good uh one. what are what other videos came out the michigan video was like a year after that that was yeah, a good, that one. Was good one i love that one what is what's your favorite video like i actually wrote down here what what do you watch yeah. to get stoked so i think for me there's a lot of videos i value but like the three that i hold sacred would be like um criminal mischief square one wide awake nightmare and then the original demolition video nice so mm -hmm. it's from your formative years you know it's not yeah. like the later stuff no and i mean i love like talk is cheap's one of my favorite videos there's a bunch of videos i really like like and stuff but like those videos kind of bring you back to a time and place where everything was just so pure yeah and like something I love about that, but also too, like some of the shit in there is still like to this day is crazy. Uh huh. Big time. Which is just cool. It's cool to see. But uh, yeah, it's just nostalgia for me. Who sticks out in square one to you? Um, dude, I loved. Um, obviously, I loved Corey Martinez. Mm -hmm. Like I like. He was kind of like the first BMXer I saw like riding like JB little stairs and stuff, which we had around Tom's River. So I was like, oh, dude, like. I want to try that. And then um, I was a huge Mike Aiken fan as everyone was. Yeah. And like, I don't know, he's just like the ultimate badass. And then, uh, I don't know, I really liked Wiz's part. Wiz's part to me was like always like, his like the coolest insight to like the dream places I want to ride. Like he rode like pools. He rode the Lubbock College with the pockets that were vert walls. And he rode like cool street spots and like, yeah like he just wrote everything but he was just like so ahead of his time with the tech stuff i love it yeah dude that's it's interesting because like the shit that i watched when i was 16 i would still say is my favorite you know like can i yeah. eat voices the 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 younger i mean that's my generation criminal criminal mischief was ahead of my time like i that's the that's the video that i like after you know a bunch of time riding bmx people are like you got to go watch these these videos and i'm like yeah, yeah you're right i do got to go do my research you know yeah and that's the thing is too with that kind of stuff if you miss your time then it doesn't really resonate right yeah exactly because so like, like i'll show our younger dudes and shit and i'll be like oh like what did you grow up i'll be like oh have you guys ever seen left right that's another video i like I yeah love dude that video. yeah i'll be like they'll be like oh yeah like 
the backwards round up the rail was crazy but like you know yeah i don't really get the rest of it i'm like yeah because like bmx has progressed so much since then but like at this time like this was crazy like yes. i just remember seeing this video and being like i've never heard of rob wise but rob wise is the new van home yeah rob wise is fucking sick dude i love it yeah one of the best of all time for sure for real <clears throat> should we try and keep uh going along your career yeah yeah i'm trying my best <laughs> me too each man. thing pulls me into stories yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? so which is good who gives a shit we can talk about yeah, whatever I'm, I'm sorry if i jump around i'm it sorry if i jump around too <laughs> uh, this is a professional podcast garrett let's get it together. i know this is really serious da, 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 da. uh what is what we're in san diego it's 10 years ago you started fiend when does there's yeah x games real street what i mean f- always fiending fiending <laughs> god damn <laughs> like, dude, what you want to how many gold um, medals do you have i don't know uh there's a i've I, I talked to a couple friends like that don't ride bmx and I was, I was like check out the guy i'm talking to today and i sent them your red bull three minute bmx insane part or whatever that's got over a million views and they're like so many bar twitchies and i'm like yeah he's yeah, pretty good you know that's a damn good part thing, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's my thing i mean it would be cool to be able to like tail open the rails and stuff too that's a little bit harder sheesh yeah you <laughs> can do it in video games and pipe or yeah. whatever it's doable have you, you guys, yeah uh, you've, you've done some pegs or whip to pegs in your shit i've seen it um yeah sure dude <laughs> here's a question what is a trick that you wish you were better at um it would be sick to be more like better at con- like crank arming rails crank arms yeah Didn't like you- I, can crank, I can crank arm rails and stuff but like and i've done some longer ones but it's never like easy for me yeah like ethan ethan yeah, Carrier like, type ethan, crank arm. like he makes it look fun and i'm like when i get in a good crank arm i see that like the balance point is really centered in the middle of your bike yeah so it makes sense that you can lock it really far but it's just so hard to get there yeah i did one in my whole life that was like this long and i'll never forget it it was the best feeling ever i was like holy shit this this grind uh, is crazy yeah. didn't yeah, you do you switch out. bar to over crank arm in barcelona uh no just regular bar yeah regular bar over crank arm in barcelona that shit's I've weak, always... dude. just kidding I know. <laughs> maybe i'll be better next year maybe <laughs> no, I've always thought the switch bar would work better since you're kicking to your switch side. Yeah, it's like a opposite spin like, almost. Like rather than going against the grain of your spin, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure I've it out. I've tried it. It's not easier. <laughs> better luck next year. <laughs> better luck next year, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess let's talk about X Games, the real real BMX. Stu corrected me. I called it Real Street, but it's Real BMX. Uh, yeah, Real BMX. It, did that start in 2016? Was that the first year? Yeah, yeah, that was you, the first year. You were yeah. in it, right? Yeah, I was in it. Um, that was like a fun project to work on. You know, it's like really serious though. Like 90 seconds isn't a lot of time. So, you know, the clips that you are going to use for it have to be pretty high quality. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know. It's a weird project. Like when you film for other projects, you're like can film stuff and maybe it goes into like the intro or the outro or whatever. I was like, this is pretty cut and dry. Like all killer, no filler. Yeah. Yeah. Good clips. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool that they decided to do that. Cause I feel like that stuff's more interesting to the general public to me than like, just like a street contest. Yeah. Like, you it's, know what I mean? Like street especially a plaza. Like, yeah it's all tries yeah like no one's really good enough that they can like do 45 seconds of like you know stuff that would be like eye-opening right but if you give them six months they can come through with 45 seconds of stuff that would like the general public would be like well that was nuts like, yeah at least you know at least i think which is so interesting to think about like you're doing stuff that the general public is going to see and I'd say you're doing a, a damn good job. You and Dennis both, I think, are like the ideal representatives of like BMX Street for to show my mom 
you know, like, yeah, yeah this is what, this is what BMX street is. That's, which is, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. Show my mom. <laughs> Hopefully she likes our riding. Oh, she loves you guys. You know, big fan, big fan mama. Uh, and then did you win? I think you got gold. Yeah, I think so. No. Oh. How Pretty many do you sure. have? Did you answer that? So, uh, what? so it's weird. I have 15 X Games gold medals. That is weird. Sure. How does that I feel? Think, uh, I don't know. Seems like it'd be hard to do. <laughs> yeah. When I think about it, I'm like, damn, that's like a lot of contests you'd have to win to get those. For real. That's at least 15, you know? Yeah. But um, it's weird. I have even more, but like some of them don't count. What do you mean? So like X Games at one year, I think was franchised out and they had like X Games competitions that don't qualify as X Games competitions. <laughs> what? Weird. <laughs> Yeah, like there's like I think like two years I won in China or something. Huh. And it was like X Games, Kia Games, and X Games, some other sponsor or something. Yeah. It's like those aren't technically X Games com- competitions or whatever. Damn. So that all this talk about you chasing this record, you already got it. Essentially, yes, but essentially no. I technically guess. no, but essentially Dude, I yes. Don't care. I really don't care about <laughs> that shit. I'll just say the one thing that's like weird for me is like it's like nonstop, like pressure like yeah one more run <laughs> going for history i'm like dude i'm just like trying to do a manny switch with like <laughs> yeah can i just five bar this four block real quick yeah yeah it's so hilarious that a 540 bar down that set is a bronze like get the fuck out of here, <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think that's sick dude like, I'm yeah like, the level of riding was awesome that shit was like a fever dream yeah i think too like real. I think it made BMX look really cool. I know um, a lot of people look at our hobby as dangerous and crazy and kooky. Yeah. And it's like to see the high end of it and like everyone walked away and put down some pretty heavy tricks is like shows that it's maybe more controlled and professional than yeah. people think. Big time. Yeah. I, mean, I think you're right about people's perception of like, oh, you ride BMX. Okay. And then oh, they have this whole I'm, visual. I'm spot on. And it's, partially due to the way the industry is marketed i believe because it's like the as a bike company owner like the core demographic of bmxers is probably the margin of money that's most is made between 12 and 15 years old yeah so you're marketing to such a weird audience for a grown man to look into yeah right it's like dude what is this yeah it really is weird yeah and then there's like sides of it that like you know like the companies we like and they're like that's like so underground and hidden that it's like doesn't even really exist yeah it's like hey so what are you doing you're 33 and you still do stunts on a little kid's bike cool you know oh, yeah. <laughs> i have people in my family are like when are you gonna stop doing that I'm like, yeah. oh, like, you don't understand like this is like the best like there's nothing that gives you this feeling like when I'm done with it, it would be really hard to find something that will make me feel like that way. Yeah. And you're like, well, wouldn't you just rather do carpentry? Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you very much, but no. <laughs> I think going to Paris and filming sounds way cooler. Yeah, fucking A. <laughs> do a feeble Oppo 5. Feeble Oppo yeah, truck. And I just watched that one too. You're like, uh, well, no, there's the Fiend... Fiend slash federal in leon yeah. right that yeah. shit was cool but then i just rewatched the one where you like won the pro video part contest vice is it e vice oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The one where you did inward 180 bar to smith to cab opposite bar to manny to 180 which is oh yeah, yeah just even saying that out loud and trying to feel it out is hilarious that's a yeah hell of a stunt there garrett <clears throat> I'll oh, tell yeah, you what. Thank you. yeah i like I, those tricks you know i like the ones that make you think yeah that's a thinker yeah i feel like when i was younger i was like the general entry level street rider yeah. where it's like if it was bigger it was cooler and it's like the most generic way to look at this shit and i remember like reading a an interview with someone and i think it was thrasher and they were like yeah you know like anyone could just huck it down some shit and get lucky but like to do the tricks i do is uh you know it's like take skill and control and it's like i'm not trying to get killed and i remember like reading that i literally felt attacked i was like (laughs) oh shit like i guess i kind of do just try to jump off (laughs) 
And it's funny that it's funny that I read this interview and it kind of changed like a lot of the ways I looked at riding. That's, I mean, and you can kind of see that in your yeah. later stuff is it's, it just keeps getting better, dude. When are you going to stop improving? Huh? Never. That's, that's what's up. My dad <laughs> no, used to say he who stops getting better ceases to be good. And then yeah, that's looks, true. You, you're taking that advice, which is fire. I yeah. did not take I that mean, advice. I just love riding. It's just yeah. like literally my passion. And it's like, sure. There will be a day when my body will be like, harder for me to do things but i've been adjusting to how my body feels in riding style for years like when i have a bad ankle we're going tech hell yeah when I have a good ankle we're going big <laughs> i don't know it's, it's you just work with what you have that's what's up uh what's the last big thing you did you can't say because uh, it's in the it's in the video that's coming up no i trucked like a pretty savage size says the biggest one i've ever done maybe like two months ago Fuck yeah. So yeah, like I'm not scared of big stuff. And um right now I've been working with um some physical therapists. Yeah. So I've had like hella sprains, which has a couple of my ligaments stretched too far in specific ways. So I'm working with them to heal that. And I've had carpal tunnel for like three years. Huh. And so I have all these injuries and they're helping me heal them. And it's like crazy. My body's like re getting strong and it's just it's been really cool that's super cool what is yeah. what it what kind of shit do you do on a day-to-day -day, like physical therapy wise or what is carpal tunnel um basically it's like the it's the ligament right here is squeezed so hard that it cuts the blood circulation off huh so that doesn't like, sound good no nah, it's horrible off. your fingers fall asleep and stuff Oof. so i do like all kinds of stretching and for someone like me it can come from your neck your back, your shoulder. So when I go and work with my physical therapist, they kind of like just we just go through everything. We just nice. go in there on it, and they're really good. Shout out to the uh, physical therapy effect. My uh, physical therapist Mark and Sarah, they're cool. always helping me really heal. And like I think when I first came in there, they were like, like I don't know, like thirty two, like thirty, like turning thirty three. Like you sure you want to blah blah blah? And then like within a week, I was like, oh look, I'm getting signs of this being better and better. And they're like super psyched now. Like, oh, this Hell is yeah. sick. Like, I'm like I treat my body like a science project. As you should. Fuck yeah, it's like always trying to figure out ways to get things to work better and stay healthier. What's the latest but, yeah, thing they, you figured out? Um, the latest thing I'd say I figured out is that trigger pointing is better with the lacrosse ball. Trigger pointing's better with a lacrosse ball versus yeah, what? Can a baseball? It, uh, like, yeah, no, just like um, a trigger, like a classic trigger pointing tool, which they yeah. usually come on either bands with like basically like knotted plastic things, or you can get um, kind of looks like a crab claw and it has like a ball on it that has like three hard pieces. And what you do is you go through the muscles and it helps you uh, get knots out of your muscles. Yeah. So you like kind of warm the muscle up. And you'll find a spot that's really tender where the knots and adhesions are. And you'll literally like go through and do ankle exercises like ABCs or circles and up down, stuff like that. And it like breaks all the tissue back up and lengthens everything back out. Huh. Dope. So, you just figured like, out it's better with a lacrosse ball. Yeah. Cause I'm always just like, kind of like fiddling, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like that's like the one thing tech riding will do to you is it'll definitely like tighten you up. Yeah, because really you're just like repeating like, the spinning. I can like feel my body the, the spins. Yeah, awkward lands, landing sideways, and like jarring your just like all kinds of stuff. You know, falls on your hips, whatever. Yeah, nothing real natural about the shit that we do on BMX bikes. Or the, no, I mean, no, and then especially like with the ankles too. I always explain to my physical therapist like, imagine trying to take an eight foot drop and then landing on a surface that goes up and down. Yeah, it's like, for real. It's not like you're jumping to flat ground. So that's why my ligaments my ankles are stretched out both ways and uh, makes sense dude even when you right? land shit it hurts and it can ruin yeah. your ankles yeah, if you, you know if you don't land in the right spot for sure it's all about being in the right spot yeah huh yeah i guess at this point you got to you know what about like diet and hydration yeah. and drinking yeah. all that shit i mean i eat pretty damn healthy for the most part and i have for like multiple years now um like really just really healthy smoothies Lots of avocados, lots of eggs, lots of bananas, lots of like, I love salmon, tuna, lots of brown rice. 
still love you know like obviously i like love my cheap foods too like i love pasta and pizza Dude, being yeah. from the east coast who doesn't i love yeah. donuts because i'm like a big coffee guy so like a nice like bitter cold brew with a sweet donut is like Oof. can't beat it but yeah most days super healthy smoothies and you know eggs and just high protein diet and that kind of stuff how often are you uh drinking alcohol if at all uh every single day <laughs> i have a pint of vodka to wake up just to get level off <laughs> uh, i mean I, I, I these days even when i do drink i pretty much casually drink and yeah. like i don't know maybe once a week something like that yeah that's the way super, to go dude super chilling these days i feel so much better when like i'm not drinking and like taking care of myself and just uh, everything's easy and i think someone said this like it's really fun to be completely out of your mind and like fuck everything and just be like so anarchy but then there's like something also really special about just having your shit together and like never struggling <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a dude it takes a while to figure that out but yes yeah. you're right <laughs> you're like well, how has life been this easy this whole time? <laughs> yeah fuck i should have got my shit together way earlier dude yeah nah I, perfect timing I, I just had some drinks on that San Diego trip. And then when I came back, I felt I could feel the inflammation of my whole body. I was just like swollen, you know, it doesn't, it's, yeah. it's fun, but, uh, it's, yeah. uh, it takes I've, it out of you. I've said, if I like actually ever go out and have like a big night with the boys that I can regain injuries, <laughs> like I could be like, my foot's getting better. And then if I did that, I'd be like, my foot kind of hurts again. Yeah. What I, I just, do, uh, did I hurt it? I'd like jump off of roof or something last night what are you <laughs> oh no, you no, just drank poison all right jesus garrett you shared this and now we got too many questions for you to answer um how much time do we have with you when do you have to go uh i have i mean i'm open for like literally as long as you guys want nice well you want to you want to answer some friend sure. questions let's see yeah i'd love to yeah let's try to it. fill in whatever i can you know We'll come in. Uh, well, first, let's talk about Chandler Golden. Did you listen? You guys, you know his story and shit. What uh, what are your thoughts on Chandler? He did. Dude, he, he did ask he's a question. Funny, he's a funny ass dude. dude. He yeah, was yeah. kicking it with us when we were out here, and he's just like, he's. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Colin when he was like younger. Like he's super ADHD and like dialed around. Like, Yo, I'm gonna do this. Watch this. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Dude, when I was in jail, <laughs> yeah. he was just like what the fuck dude i love him he's so un unabashedly himself which is like yeah something I, that i've always i've always really enjoyed people that are like i think just because i'm so mellow like augie's like that just in a completely different way just and like he's just interesting yeah just like, exactly that's what he's it is. not interesting. your average dude and most bmxers are but like that dude is definitely like his own person. He's not ashamed of it. He's not embarrassed by it. And there's like something so cool about that. Like, yeah. just like, it's like liberating to be around. I don't almost. care. Yeah. I love that. Uh, let's see. White Mike says, will the world ever see your incredible no footed cans? LOL. Do you have incredible no footed cans? What does uh, this mean? I don't know about incredible, but I can do them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it was an inside joke or something. No, Chandler no, Golden. Chandler Golden says, what is one of your biggest goals you've accomplished in BMX? I like that. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know if I have a biggest goal per se, but I think like the highest honor I've ever received for like being a BMXer was I did a make a wish. Nice. What? So, like, Tell me about yeah, that. That was like super like just hectic in general you know what i mean like i've never dealt with something like that but um yeah there was a kid who was he was sick and he loved bmx and he wanted to meet me and um i think he's from the midwest his parents came out with him and stuff and we took him around riding and like yeah, dude when you do make a wish like usually it's like not so low end like me <laughs> so like you usually get like an hour with the person or whatever so yeah. he like went to the skate park and we were with the kid and he like we we're riding with them and like trying to hang out with them and just make them feel like part of the crew. And they're like, all right, well, you're done. And I'm like, well, we're like, like the make a wish. But I'm like, you guys are welcome to leave. But he's like, welcome to like hang out with us. You know, like that's just what we do. Hell yeah. So we we took him around all weekend and stuff. And like <clears throat> the make a wish I, is. I him to the crew. We brought him to my house. 
I'm, had a little party with him. Like we just really like tried our best, like every one of us to like make the kid feel super special and stuff. Cause what was his name? Um, Cody. Cody. I had Shout to think of been quite a few years yeah rest in peace dude super good kid parents super good people just unfortunate situation man just to get a shit hand of cards yeah what what was his situation uh he had some really really if i remember correctly it was like a really rare version of uh crohn's disease that is like way more lethal damn like his body was essentially always trying to kill itself dude like it's like the statistic of him getting it because he was kind of open to talking about it and he was telling us he was like the statistic of him getting it was like seriously like microscopic yikes like it was, it was just yeah. like oh man how old was he um so he i believe he was like 17 when he came with to hang out with us and i would say he like i forget what his lifespan was but his lifespan was like under 23 or something Word. Like one of, it's like it's gotta be so hard to deal with and just even for his yeah, parents that's heavy yeah. dude like like kind of like why we were like I'm sure his parents are going for a while i'm like yo if you want to, he seems like he wants to kick it with us if you guys want to go like enjoy the beaches and stuff i can just come pick him up and you can come out filming with us for the day and we'll go to a skate park and like damn you know try to do whatever because dude that's just got to be so hard i think like i'll bring it back to my dad passing my dad died of a massive heart attack and it was quite abrupt but I think it's a lot easier and it's never easy to lose anyone, but it's a lot harder if you're like on a timeline and you're like questioning every day and it's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's coming to an end. I feel like that's just really, really difficult on people would be right. for me. Yeah. It's like ripping a band aid off or like, like slowly knowing that it's going to end. Like, oh, yeah. the dread of just, yeah, dude, that's heavy, man. That may be emotional. Just thinking about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Cody. Um, okay. I mean, that's a that's a vague one, but shout out Florentino Hernandez. He says, favorite memory story from Jersey. Um, my favorite memory story from Jersey, probably just like being just like, I don't know, just kind of like terrorizing my area. Hell yeah. like, me me and my friends were like i'm i'm a really good dude now but when i was a kid i was just like we we're all just little shits like when i could like remember like snowballing cars just terrorizing just, like, throwing bottles of water at people like like you know just like stuff that like would not fly these days just like i don't know it's just like but it wasn't only us doing it, it was that cky influence on like yeah. our area like the tri-state area got hit with that heavy like and like i don't know just how free everything was back in like those younger years of my life. Like, like I said, like going and staying at my homie Corey's house where like my house was a little bit more locked down mm -hmm. and his house was super wide open. And like his parents were like just super loose to let the kids do whatever they want. And I can just remember like me and him leaving his house at like one 30 in the morning when I'm like 12 <laughs> to go right downtown Tom's river and just being like, Damn. this is thickest thing ever like you know yeah it felt like we were on our own little road fools like yeah we ride this late dude <laughs> yeah. dude that's bomb man i wish i had a friend that i could go to their parents house back in the day and go ride it it was so funny working through like the having parents and curfews but riding yeah. and staying out till 11 was like a big deal <clears throat> yeah all right uh Sasito says advice for kids that are really trying to bring back the video part slash full length side of BMX. Um, trying to think of a good way to put it, but like, just save your footage. You can always cut it up and drop it off into social media. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's, you you make a bigger splash if you make something that's like memorized. You know, like yeah, and it's hard to do it right off the beginning, but like Van Holman's criminal mischief part would have never been anything if it was just broke up into 30 post uh, two years. Yeah. For yeah. real. It's since it lives and it's like a thing, it will always be easy to be tracked where like, I don't think you can post the cool stuff on Instagram, but like maybe make a compilation. I don't know. It's like it's <laughs> yeah. easily tracked. Like, dude, I think he posted it like, between these years and like i don't know like have fun with it like i think the beauty of um i think the beauty of making videos to me was always just like kind of seeing like a glimpse into a scene 
where you can see what people are like and how they navigate and like you know it's yeah. just always people having fun with their friends and like it's all about pushing yourself just a little bit to get that dopamine drip just like yeah. oh so good and like you know every time one of your friends does that it's kind of how you keep them in riding for real makes them feel like it gives them that little rush yep and then once the project's done you get to bring everybody together in person and premiere it versus yeah. like putting it out on your phone i think like the instant gratification of instagram versus the delayed gratification the more the you obviously understand delayed gratification and it's yeah. the shit. there's a lot of cool things that can be used outside of bmx that you will learn from making a video project so it's very valuable yeah big facts that dude it shaped my entire life Fucking, yeah <laughs> been, i'm sure yeah. your skills translate into all kinds of stuff yeah it's great uh, he also asked, have you incorporated psychology with BMX trick progression, spot use, or career? That's interesting. Um, you no, know, I don't think so. <laughs> I do like, I guess the closest thing I do is like I meditate. Nice. Just I just started like, doing that a couple months ago. How long have you been doing that? Uh, off and on, like a year. Nice. How'd and you start? Kind of, Are you doing guided meditation or something? Yeah, I was doing guided meditation and um, the Wim Hof breathing techniques. Nice. What is, so, is the Wim Hof like breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth? Yeah. Shape? And it's, it's basically just like getting your body full of oxygen and then just holding your breath for a bit. And then you can just feel the blood pumping. It just essentially helps your blood pump and like kind start of feeling tingly. You, is that a yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. But it like, it makes you like, um, kind of just present. Yeah. You know, like when you like when you're breathing, you feel like you're doing something, but then when you're still, you realize you can hold your breath forever and it helps get all your blood pumping at such a high level and you like just feel super calm. Kind of helps. Like I have ADD and like just my mind just it's always thinking about multiple things. I'm sure you can see that even with this podcast. Yeah. Um it just kind of helps calm that down, but also like it's just really good for everyday life just to be present. Yeah. Like I it I've noticed a big difference in like I'll be going throughout my day and then I'm just like very present in whatever moment I'm in because of the meditation that I did in the morning where it's like there all there is is now and it's just like oh yeah that's dope yeah yeah and you gotta live in the moment and then if you get further into it you start to learn how to body scan yeah which is like body scanning for me was kind of helping me understand what parts of my body I needed to work on to help heal things hell yeah because usually I couldn't feel it like, yeah I'm pretty to, I guess the pain, I guess I was just used to it. <laughs> because you're just not in tune. You don't, you, you, I mean, it's weird that we like have to sit down and like consciously think about our body in order to, to like, yeah, uh, you know, understand what's going on, which is powerful shit, dude. I love that. I'm stoked you're meditating. And the importance of breathing, which we just kind of forget sometimes. Yeah. We <laughs> take it for granted that we're just doing it on autopilot all day. But when you sit and like yeah. think about your breathing for however yeah. long, five, 10 minutes, it changes, changes shit. Dylan Ashlock asks, is deadline two a real thing? Decade. <laughs> in a decade? <laughs> yeah, we made a joke when we dropped it. Um that we drop it in a decade, which would have been last year. Oh shit, uh, it's already been a decade. I yeah. I don't think it I don't think it would. It would be cool. Um, but yeah, I think at this point of like all my homies' careers and shit, like their time's better spent. Yeah. Stay in touch with the sponsors who are paying them rather than some homies video. Yeah. And like everyone's a bit older. I think I'm probably the loosest one with my like schedule and stuff where I like I'm always down for whatever, but a lot of people are grown up and you know, they don't want to be out every night filming anymore. They want to handle their business when they handle it and do it for like the companies they work for rather than just like, you know, some homie it's shit. Good. Filming a full length, it's it's no easy task. So yeah. well especially leading up to something like that where you know the last thing you'd ever want to do is create a letdown mm -hmm. so you, have, you have a Fuck. lot to live up to so i like, think <laughs> yeah. our guys would be smart enough to know that like you signed up for it, you better really want to do it yeah for real shit uh he also asks favorite bmx meme account do you follow any meme accounts dude i love rodeo peanut yeah man like I'm I know they don't really post anymore, but like, dude, they're, I'm a huge comedy fan and their, their shit is so good. Like, yeah, we're just like all the double dipping and just funny humor. I don't know. I love it. I love it too, man. Uh, so who's your favorite comedian? Uh, outside of BMX, obviously. I'd say, uh, probably Bill Burr with Tom Segura. Yes, dude. Those yeah. are goats. Two of my favorites, but I love Chappelle. 
I love, I don't know, I love so many of them. What about Shane Gillis? Do you like Shane Gillis? Have you listened uh, to him? I'm not really familiar with him. I'm going to have to check him out. Yeah, I'll send him, I'll send you some shit. He's so good, dude. All right. I got to see uh, Theo Vaughn recently. That was awesome. Nice, in person, obviously. Yeah. That's dope. Shout out to the homie Ian that works at the Bourbon Room in uh, Hollywood. It's Calvin's homie. We were just out there one day filming. He was like, you want to go see uh, Theo Vaughn and uh, Craig Robinson? I was like, where do we get the tickets? And he's yeah, like, fuck oh, yeah. he works there. He'll just pull up the red carpet for you. Sick as fuck. That's awesome. Yeah, Theo Vaughn's brain is talk about ADHD or just on some other yeah, shit, he's, man. Dude, yeah. He's funny. <clears throat> Sorry, Trip. Damn. <clears throat> uh, BMX Kids 99 says, bring back the zebra bandana and the two-color hair. I might. Might have to. Might. 20-year 20, uh, 20 anniversary. Yeah, dude, you could do it as a <laughs> Halloween costume. Just, like, be Garrett from 20 years ago. That would be funny. It's, it's funny, too, because I see, like, the two-tone hair thing, like, kind of, like, in the hip-hop scene now. Yeah, it's coming back. It's yeah, wild. Like, it's so funny because I remember, like, just doing that because I was just out of my mind, little kid that just wanted to be different than everyone and just yeah. loved punk rock and, like, anti-establishment. Like, now it's, like, kind of, like, mainstream mm-hmm. hip-hop, like, being different kind of to market yourself yeah for real it's like it's gone full circle going anarchy just became like the norm now and so yeah for sure it's like more (laughs) rebellious to like have a traditional relationship and raise a family and be responsible and shit yeah he's going against the grain that guy's crazy (laughs) yeah he pays his bills and raises his child that's crazy uh fm f fm 40 fmf what the O R Y six. Will you ever put back a cassette on? No way. When it's arriving, and then I feel like manual tricks. You don't even have to really do them right, dude. Like, I don't know. Manual tricks are so much more impressive with a coaster to me. Like, that's why you gotta appreciate someone like Devin Smiley and like how it's he's mastered it within a niche. Which is like, I think there's the cassette guys that are cool too. Like, Courage uses a cassette to his advantage, just like yeah. Devin uses the um coaster to his advantage but yeah no like there's a coaster hasn't changed my life at all yeah i it, it, it's it's only a one-sided thing it's always a plus so why would i go back to a negative like less <laughs> options are always more boring yeah well i'm on i'm on your side with the free coaster um let's see what happened to cbd md mario fbk says uh cbmd i'm not really fully sure um I think the pandemic hit them pretty hard. And like, I think they, one of those companies they blew up, got super big. So they started spending a lot of money in action sports. And I know they sponsor like a bunch of dope, like action sport athletes, like Chris Cole and like motocrossers and everyone, well, everyone pretty much got let go because I think their market got so competitive and oversaturated overnight because there was, it was so lucrative for a small period of time. <laughs> everyone else jumped in on like more of a competitive thing and like it kind of sucks for them because there was like they were like all tested by doctors and stuff and like doing all this gnarly research where i don't think like most of those companies are yeah but they're competing at a lower price so yeah they that was eventually... like a gold rush was the cbd industry coming out like i mean dude i know homies that were talking about starting a company and like i know other companies hit me up about paying me to ride from like there's gotta be so much money in it but it just 180 real quick yeah they go i i haven't right. thought about that since like damn, i haven't even heard cbd md in in a while yeah. yeah yeah it was cool they gave me some free money for some years and uh, their stuff actually works really well what do you use do you take it or do the roll on no i would use um i think their best thing they had was the anti-inflammatory um formula which is like i forget what it is it's like your body heals that like 30 to 40 percent faster with the all the thc shit in there and it's like I, I don't know it definitely works i like the sound of that like i could like i can literally feel it like help relax my muscles and like relax areas and like flush inflammation out and stuff it's the real deal dude i can't yeah. believe this shit was so illegal for how like forever but I've, in, in our lifetime was- weed and cbd went from being like fully you're going to jail to everybody's doing it and it's completely normal yeah. it's kind of wild yeah they would they would rather you mask your pain yeah. with bad things than actual heal. <laughs> keep keep you sick. Make more money. There's a lot more money in you getting sick than being healthy. Big time, dude. That's real. Uh Rolly Flesh, we answered this one. Who wins in a game of bike? You or Dennis Anderson? 
It depends on the spot. Depends, depends on, on uh, the spot, but I don't know. It depends on the day, the park. Dennis probably win most times, though. Dennis is pretty damn good. I'll, I'll give him pretty that Pretty good much. at riding. Pretty, pretty good. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play him on his YouTube channel. Fuck yeah. Dude, his YouTube is awesome. It's been, <laughs> he's been doing it. Uh, all right. Steven Bikes. He's from out here. He says, oh. BRB. Yeah. Oh, shit. See, now you're sideways. <clears throat> what happened? How do we fix that? Let me see. How'd you do that? There it is. Hey. Boom. I was like, it's just my phone's confused. I am. I thought your phone died for sure, but no, that's, no, no. that's cool. We still no, got, I got, we still a, got some juice. I got the charger and stuff right oh, here. Oh, hell just, yeah. Official. Yeah, I try to be semi-prepared, you know? Yeah, semi. That's that's me I, for the last hour of cramming for this podcast, like <laughs> looking, looking at old shit. I tried to find you doing another podcast, but is this your first one? No, I did one with Dennis. Oh, yeah, but yeah. that's not on YouTube. That's on... Yeah podcast podcast okay yeah and it would have been sicker to do this in real life yeah it would have i want to actually i was out there i tore my planner in my foot no shit the day after you came and kicked it with us yeah and i was like all right i'm being i'm being laid up (laughs) yeah (laughs) i was in pain it hurt (laughs) that sucks well maybe i don't know because i was thinking about that too i want to come out to san diego and do it do it properly so maybe we'll do another one sometime yeah yeah i want to say we can try to write a timeline down maybe keep us on track a little bit <laughs> yeah. i would say it's hard because like even when i'm answering it i'm trying to think of the time and then i was like oh shit i just entered like talking about being pro should i like talk about that and then that sides into that it's just well that's too- dude that's part of podcasting is just like you're going on this ride and you just gotta fucking yeah. ride yeah, it, just take it, wherever it takes you. yeah exactly uh and also you know who cares but this question i like steven bikes is from out here he says how do you stay humble when you're constantly bombarded by people telling you you're the goat do people constantly tell you to your face that you're the goat or are they just talking Uh, about you behind your back no people i've get a i get a lot of people that are like insane like they're like almost insane on how much they support my riding and like my ability it's like kind of almost gives me power because i'm like dude i'm not like that good and i'm like i guess the way i stay humble is like i don't know i know what it is like i'm a dude that's good at riding kids bikes like it's (laughs) in the shit it ain't nothing (laughs) (laughs) that's real and like even when i was a kid like going to scotty's parks like there were dudes that would pop up that were like pro and they had the ego and i remember being like 13 and being like this dude's a fucking clown like that's real you know get over yourself i don't know I learned how to navigate myself. I'd say mostly. I remember me and my buddy Corey, the one I've been talking about the whole time. Um, we went to John Jennings Trails, and like we were super nervous to go back there as kids because it's like a hardcore trail scene, you know? Yeah. And we went back there, and like these dudes are like the pros and legends of our area. They were so cool to us, and I just remember being like, it meant so much to us how cool they were, and just like. Oh no, I'll never forget Garrett Burns. Like he was like the Dos Equis guy to us. Like he was like yes. in the trails in a hammock eating watermelon <laughs> with no shoes on, just like, yeah, man, I just came back from like Spain, blah, blah, blah. And he was just so like personal and cool with us. I was like, that's the coolest that's person I've ever met. Yeah. yeah, that's how you need to be. Yeah. And that I mean, if anybody could have an ego, Garrett Burns is so good. He could he could have been have an ego for sure, but he's egoless. Which I'm really happy that you don't have that either. Because, like, I, we've never really talked much, but there was, like, over the years, I was like, I wonder what Garrett's like. And then I, I have heard nothing but nice things, but it's like, yeah. if anybody could have an ego, it, it could be you. But I'm glad yeah. you don't. Not a very egotistic person. And, like, well, ego's a weird word because, like, you want to have self confidence and, sure. you know, but to be basically, you're not a douchebag, is what yeah. I'm getting at. No, I mean, you, have to, you have to have yeah. self confidence to do what we do, yeah. but it's like, you also just want to be like cool yeah exactly and you're not i don't know you don't think of yourself as like better than anybody else <clears throat> no so so uh do you consider yourself the goat just kidding Let's see uh yeah okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Literally... check out my fucking 15 x games gold medals dog Look yeah at i mean i was 18. wearing those i was wearing those earlier while i was watching <laughs> old video parts get <laughs> they're not even ready for my new shit oh i'm the best johnny's been training johnny's been training my confidence <laughs> that's what's up dude. <laughs> <laughs> well 
Let's go. <laughs> uh let's stop burning those beans i love his writing uh favorite street spot of all time that's a great question that's a uh, hard question i think hmm, that one is so difficult i'm gonna have to go though um the silverton rails and tom's river this is like free skate parks having flat rails in my area there was three perfect flat rails in a row okay I, i'd like a clip and deadline to like ward when any backers are gonna pop out oh okay yeah, yeah. I know exactly but that's like that spots in my area where i grew up and it was like super fun sessionable all the time and it was like abandoned for years so no one used that business nice so we, we could just ride it all the time that's like, ideal yeah you couldn't beat it that's a good that's a good choice i like that, that or tom's river uh east the middle school i've had some footage there but it, it was like a like a skate park kind of had like banks chase the heart rides it sometimes now i see pulls up but it had like a little bank to wall ride with like a bump jump street gap and then it had all these ledges with pads and then there was like a bank you can like jump into and then jump into the street it's really cool damn yeah that sounds it's like, fun it's like a super interesting spot oh yeah I'm trying to think of mine yeah what the, would wedge, you the wedge doug just the, wedge? the memories at the wedge and yeah, all the yeah. iconic shit that i've seen there. and i just love balance trick so riding the wedge is very yeah. fun and the shade you know yeah definitely need shade, shade, shade in Arizona. shades are really good advantage to like how long you'll stay at a spot for real yeah some ditches you're just like roasting in the sun <clears throat> yeah best for spot hours. ever you're like this is horrible yeah so, come here for business <laughs> yeah you come there for business and that's it uh let's see good grief tj says hardest bar variation you've learned and why is your stash so red <laughs> Um, I don't know what the hardest bar variation I learned would be. Um, probably a bar over crank arm. Yeah, that seems can, like a pretty crazy one. I cannot explain how hard and dangerous that trick is. It's like you're going against the bike, kicking it over in a trick that's going to put you in the back, but you got to find the front. It's, yeah. it's, there's so much shit going on. It's so intricate. And it's yeah. like, done hundreds of them and everyone is still hard it's not like a trick that gets easier for me that's a wild one what's some like have you done the you know park shit where you do a fly out quadruple bar how many bars have you done in one uh i used to do like triple trucks and stuff when i used to ride park contests and stuff but Sick. i don't know it was, I was pretty far and few between like the triples like i always thought like like double the table or double the turn down was tighter yeah like, it is tighter. like at a point it just gets stale yeah. But it's like progression. You know what I mean? Yep. There's no flavor to it, but it's, it's just button else. mashing. Like yeah, a triple bar spin is just button yeah. mashing. Okay. So why is your mustache so red, Garrett? Um, I don't know. It's funny that I even have a mustache because I used to make fun of my dad for it. Like I used to call him like, fuck, oh, look at his dick duster. And like, <laughs> and I was like, naturally, like my facial hair grows so quick. It just like kind of came in. But it's a good look. I like, I have a, pretty much no upper lip so it makes my upper lip feel more there there we go cool that's why it's so rad <laughs> yeah that's why it's rad dude it fills my face out i'm the best rider and i got the best fucking mustache dude what do you what else you want to talk about ace says has he ever fucked with top load stems i personally like front loads as well this is fun yeah. people get kids get to have a conversation with you right now yeah so <laughs> I, do, I do like top loads and i think there are a lot of advantages with top loads like when I ride someone's bike with a top load, I feel like manualing comes so easy. And like, cause it's already up there. Yeah. So if you just put your weight, it just comes up where like a front load's lower. So you have to actually lift more. Right. But then I feel like for me, the lower bike is possible to lift up to higher stuff, especially in the realm of like whipping over stuff or so whip, whipping up to stuff to manual. Yeah. So it's, I think that's kind of why I stayed with it the most, but they both definitely have their pros and cons. I like how the front load looks better than the top load. Oh, for sure. Um, but I see what you're saying. It just looks classic and it looks yeah. clean, kind of hides the headset from the front, which makes yeah. the bike look like less mechanical. Yeah. You know what I mean, like yeah. it makes it look more just naturally clean. I like that. Um, we touched this fool's whack. How do you stay so motivated? Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> have um, you ever taken a break? He said, doesn't seem like you have taken a break. Have you ever taken a oh, break? Yeah, I definitely take breaks and stuff and like i kind of even try to teach our dudes that that like it's uh it's the long ride not the short ride you know you don't want to like 
go on some crazy two year run, blow through everything you can do, and then just be like, you know what? Yeah, I hate so, it. I definitely take my breaks and stuff, but um, I don't know, just the way I am, you know, like I just that's my writing kind of keeps my like zen chill calmness and like if i don't get that out like i start to act more crazy and like more aggressive and like i get angrier easier and stuff but then i ride and i'm just like oh today's a very nice day i'm happy <laughs> to be alive i'm glad i have drinking water or i'm not riding i'm like what the fuck are you looking at dude like <laughs> I said uh, medium sure. rare <laughs> take it back yeah <clears throat> uh dustin arp wants to know when are we going to get this fiend video well he says fiend full-length video but um so is there a fiend full-length video, video in addition to this new one or yeah we have five videos in the works right now no <laughs> you lying <laughs> <laughs> no um we only have one video in the works and uh we're shooting for like december nice so we we just went through with tony like when johnny was here and stuff we went through like timelines and that kind of things and we're looking pretty good we need a couple of trips you know but uh i like where we're at and you know the way we run things like if we want to pull it a little bit back just to make it right we will do it but yeah. we'd also like to kind of get it out i love that about you guys you know you're yeah, not, well, I mean, not in a hurry yeah well i mean and nowadays we're lucky enough to have social media that we can carry the company through that and like right. make like what we want to make, you know, yep. cause it's like, it's all about like your artistic creative direction. So it's like, it's not ready. It's not ready. Like, yeah. BMX no... parts are going to sell so much either way. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well do what we love rather than like, you know, put something out and then look at it for the rest of your life. Like, man, if we just took that one extra month. <laughs> yeah. And there's no, you don't have a big corporate, you know, bureaucracy putting a deadline on a hard deadline on you. No pun intended. Yeah, it's like it's me, and I'm like very in tune that um, the way to make a good video is time. Yeah. Um, my guy, Westside Legend, says, "Did you ride for Redline before Premium?" Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Oh yeah. Read. Read. Start. Oh, sorry. Go. I said I was on the rebranding of Redline with Mike Escamilla. I remember I have one good story I'll share quick. I don't want to drag it out too long, but my guest and me had called my house and my homie Corey, like my younger homie was there. And my mom was like, my guest and me is on the phone, Gary. And I was like, <laughs> what's it uncommon? Cause like me and my friend, uh, Justin Owens and like my homie Adam, and, like all of our friends groups used to just call our parents and be like, yeah, um, Jason ends is on the phone. And like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just fuck with each other. Like, yeah, Van Homan's on the line. And I like answered and I was like, what up? Who is like, you know, like thinking it's one of the homies is actually him. <laughs> but I, just, like, I remember like, just like being like, what up motherfucker. And then like shrinking immediately and being like, uh, hi, Mike Escamilla. How are you? <laughs> Hello, sir. Is <laughs> yeah. What's up motherfucker? I mean, sorry, sir. Rooftop. Yeah. <clears throat> Reed Stark, you scared stiff says, what's the hardest clip you ever worked for? I'd like to Ooh, know that too. A good question. I would really have to look through the footage. <laughs> um, I'd say the full cab wave in my X Games part, I had to work pretty hard for that. And it wasn't necessarily like tries, but I did like a lot of full cab whips off this loading dock to get prepared to do it down a little block spot, which is like still a pretty small block spot. But with that trick, it gets so much harder to control with speed because everything's whipping. Yeah. Just like, I already had a really hurt foot and it was for one of those X Games parts and those are obviously obviously very strict set deadlines. So I remember just being out of the crunch and like going out to practicing it with a bruised heel and being like, fuck, even if I land it right, it kind of, you know, is yeah, aggravating this is gonna suck. Heel. <laughs> and I was being like, oh man, it's only twice as big and I only have to go a bit faster, but it's so much harder to try. I was like, this fucking sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that works and then you pull it perfect and the rest is history so you did I'm that glad, shit with a bruised heel huh yeah i'm glad i'm glad it worked out too because they tore that spot right out of that like literally i think like two months later got torn out damn didn't know so that. If, if i wasn't filming for that and i didn't have the pressure i would have missed the opportunity on that spot which i think would have been like the the easiest four block you can do it on yeah 
That's a good one. And then I think that was that same year. Lewis had a full cab whip in his part too. Did you guys? Yeah. You guys yeah, plan that? Like, you guys no, call each no, other? No. Just I'm no. just kidding. Of course you didn't plan it. I was like, I'll do a bigger one. <laughs> How many stairs, Lou? Yeah. How many stairs? I'll, I'll do twelve. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Let's go. Um, Ed Hewitt says, "When are you gonna move back to the East Coast?" Ooh. I have considered it before, dude, but I don't know. I would. If anything, I would probably just rent my house out and then rent somewhere on the East Coast. Yeah. I thought about doing it this summer, but it's just always hectic with the amount of stuff and like people coming into my house to stay and filming yeah. and stuff. And then if I go out to the East Coast for the summer, Tony's gonna be here. So that's you know, true. Huh? Be, I would just be I would be there <laughs> like just kicking it, which would be so fun. Like I went out last October and I was like, damn, like I just miss the east coast sometimes yeah it's a different everything driving around yeah. is different the weather's different people are different but i'm like uh, one of those people i could like live anywhere it's like every city i go to i'm like oh i like this place i could live here yeah like, what's I, the I worst that. city you've ever been to ah worst city fuck i don't know I'm trying to think what was the name of this place you went to this place to like check this roof spot out in the middle of Pennsylvania. And actually, I wouldn't say it was the worst city. It was maybe the funniest place I've ever been. Like you can see it was like a really ran down town where like OB addiction is just taking over. Yeah. And like out of all places, I went to a church that had this really sick roof spot. And like the roof spot was maybe like a little bit under bar height to get on as a manual pad up. And then the other side was higher, but landed in a driveway landing. So it was just like a super intricate, cool roof spot. And we went out there to check it out. And like in the parking lot, there's three little kids riding BMX. Huh. And I like went up, I gave them stickers and we're like hanging out with them. And I actually didn't even get to ride the spot. The um, the cops came over and started hassling us and then were yelling at the kids. And they were like, blah, blah, blah. Like you guys shouldn't be in this parking lot riding. And I was like, I, as a grown up, I tried to be like, oh, it's like my fault. Like I'm a bike company. I seen little kids and I thought it'd be cool to give them stickers, blah, blah, blah. And like the cops were just so rude. And then huh. like next to, next to this um, spot was like a house. And there was like some like drunk lady up in the house. She was like, leave them alone. Fuck the boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a really small town. And like, damn it, you just got out. Like, shut up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they're just like, yo, this town is fucking crazy <laughs> i just couldn't believe like these kids these little kids were doing something so positive and then like the cops literally would just gave them the hardest time like you can't be here so like, i don't know did you get to ride no you didn't get to ride the spot <clears throat> no they were like they were like pressing us super hard and just like small town stuff it was like this place is just weird like yeah it seems it's like so it was, wild to think people actually cool. live like that in small yeah. i mean like that as if it's a bad thing but small town middle america you know like it's a totally different world yeah it's uh that's a good way to build your confidence. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> um, let's see. Do, do, do. Dan Mulher, what do you have for breakfast? We kind of talked about that. Um, so you have I'm, today? Pretty, I'm pretty notorious on like acai bowls, a really big smoothie, or um, I'll make a breakfast with like three eggs, sunny side up, a couple pieces of uh, turkey bacon, and like avocado. Bomb. Those are pretty much like my go tos. Yeah, my breakfast this morning was four eggs over medium, though, and then some avocado and some cheese, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then if I'm going to scumbag it out, definitely like donuts and like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like to I like to let loose every once in a while. Uh, I can't come back from like crazy, like <laughs> sugar like that. <laughs> yeah. Banger Boys says uh, Bob Randall. I believe that's Bob Randall. Yeah, it's Bob Randall. Yeah. Um, what is the most amount of time spent on filming a trick? Have you ever done one where it's like multiple? I'm sure you have multiple. Yeah, of course. Multiple trips, um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Maybe like um, there's that one clip my ice hands for. I do like 1A bar, backlash, cab bar, mani 1A down whip. Yeah. That one, I don't know if it was the longest, but I had the like most amount of time that I had to go to that spot. Like the first day I tried it, I got on and my coaster engaged and that trick just depends on where you catch your feet but sometimes you, you engage your coaster and then i got kicked out and then i went back another day after trying another trick and i had pretty low energy and i couldn't do it 
And then I went back, I think, a third time and got kicked out right away. And then, like, the fourth day I went there, I went before filming another clip, and it happened so like, – it was, like, 10 tries. Nice. But it was, like <laughs> – usually, like, two times is, like – if I can't get in, like, two times of coming back, I'm, like, I'm going to let it chill for a while because right. I already have all this negative energy around – this and it's like i don't want to be like bummed out trying something like i want to try something fresh and come back to it yeah smart oh well, worth it that clip stands the fuck out that's a damn good one yeah thank you the real yabob from florida where do you think bmx will be and be like in the next 10 to 15 years um hopefully in the next 10 to 15 years it would be sick to see um like bmx in a good place it'd be sick to see like us as an industry getting more people into it um it'd be cool to see the industry in a better place to like help support more filmers and writers to keep creating and it would be sick to see us doing like uh more of our own events like i really think like what trey does is awesome yeah and like viewing it from california i'm like we need to do something like that in, like palm springs or something you know like, it'd be yeah. so hard to do it in like the main cities but like off the beaten path i feel like I don't know. That kind of stuff grew BMX when I was a kid. So yeah, Coachella for bikes. Yeah, people people like to feel a part of something, you know. Yeah, big time. But well, that's more hopes than where I see it from a riding perspective. I bet it'll be absolutely crazy. Yeah, for real, because yeah. progression only gets crazier. Like as soon as the instant clips come out and everybody's everybody's level, I'm sure you've seen it just in your like time the amount sure. of the talent yeah, that's out there is insane like yeah. johnny was just the young kid that could do all the shit now he's like the dude that everybody's the young kids are looking at and so it's only yeah. gonna add on it and, yeah. and he's just crazy. casually doing bar to hangers yeah dude in the mid run like what the no, fuck? no one can do that yeah it's i haven't seen anybody one. else do it yeah no, no it's one of one <laughs> it's so nuts dude go johnny go uh let's see we talked about that. Your hardest trick, just Alex Beza shout out. Top three, Cal Alex Uloa says top three California skate parks. Um. All right. So number one, City Heights. Number two, Linda Vista. Number three, Sheldon. Done. It's like all really good parks. Uh, what about your backyard, dude? Just kidding. Clute show. The backyard is fun. Your back backyard is an honorable mention. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What's the deal? Clute. Is it Clute or Clut Show? Clute. It's Clute. Yeah. Clute. What's the deal with the Flow Team Clute? All caps. Uh, um. So I went out to, um, what's the name of the jam? Why can't I think of it right now? The jam in Lyon. And I yeah. met those dudes. And I think they know maybe I like comedy and they're kind of like fucking around joking. I just started joking with them. And the next thing you know, I was friends and they're like, we want to put you on, but only as flow. And I was like, I'm trying to earn, I'm trying to earn my spot, man. I'm not yes, anything. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do it. I want to walk my way up the ranks. And like, they <laughs> like, uh, they love John Claude on Nick Van Dam. Yes. Like they always send me like stupid memes of him. And like, I think like, cause I love Tom Segura. He always roasts Steven Seagal. Yep. And I always just send him like shit of Steven Zagal like fighting someone, but he's like sitting down. <laughs> it's just, it's, there's I remember no, when that shit happened it's I, just silly. two years ago or whatever, the clute, clute stuff. Yeah. I still remember like you being on flow for them. It's hilarious. All right. Yeah. Maybe uh, in the next 10 years I'll get pushed up to amateur. Someday you'll become something. Maybe, you know, just keep trying. You know, that's yeah. all you can do is just stay passionate and i mean it is good advice keep trying <laughs> just keep trying man <laughs> jake bob 69 i love him uh what's in your daily backpack uh usually like water wax tools uh theragun uh lacrosse Ooh, you stay strapped with the theragun oh for sure hell yeah <laughs> always strapped i made a joke i was like one day i'm gonna get shot because i'm just always like having like <laughs> yeah. myself but yeah, water, usually some kind of like water. Sometimes I run it with the water with the like uh, liquid IV and some lemon water and stuff. Nice. Uh, sometimes coffee, sometimes a Red Bull, just depending on the day, energy levels. Um, yeah, tools, brick rub maybe. Kid. I have, uh, it depends too what we're riding because I have a lot of stuff to like modify spots in my car too. Nice. That's uh, something I got a lot of respect for is putting the effort into like modify spots. 
Yeah. <clears throat> What's your least favorite trick? Just Alex Beza. Damn, he really Maybe submitted the, all the questions. Maybe the the stovepipe, the one hand X down, dude. That thing had never had flavor. <laughs> that is a weird trick, dude. It's just like like it's like where do you hard, put your hand even? Like, you're like, yeah, like I don't know, limp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just looks funny. Uh let's see. I just that Alex Beza said, asked five. Oh, that being said, what? Casey Badger might have been able to make it look good. Mm-hmm. Casey Badger made it. Everything he made X ups look cool, so he could have probably figured it out. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's because he did all yeah. the way full bar like, spins X ups without taking your hand off. He must have long arms or something. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's an artist. This one I want to know Va favorite video part of the new era of dudes. Did you Ooh. watch Freak? Yeah, I watched Freak. Sheesh, that was good. Yeah. Um. I guess we can talk about Freak for a little bit. I liked, um, I really like Jordan Godwin's part. And like, obviously all those dudes' parts are really good. Yeah. Bias, I'm going to have to say Lou, of course, too. Um, yeah. But yeah, dude, those are four guns right there. Like For real. Felix, Felix has that thing that like, if you watch him ride in real life, Chad Curley and Bruno Hoffman have it. Like, I feel like I never see them miss a trick. And then Alex Donaghy is like on the innov innovative side of like tricks. Like, yeah, I feel like he's always just figuring out little MVDs and stuff. Yeah. And then Lou's just steez. He is, like, dude. He just looks good on that bike. Like, he's just yeah. meant to. He's like our little, like, he's like our street Aiken or something. Like, he's For like, real? Oh, look how loose and limber that guy looks. He's all long. Yeah. Um, and then Jordan Godwin, I feel like, is taking rail riding just to a completely different level. Like, I have nothing but respect for him because it's like, Dude, rail riding is psycho. Like <laughs> it is. Nolly over smithing a rail, like the way you have to try that. Like if you were to slip into like switch crook or like switch rail ride or something, dude, you were in such a bad spot. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't even comprehend like how good he is at that stuff. But I um, remember he did like nolly over opposite crank arm or regular yeah. crank arm. I don't yeah, know what it was, but nolly over crank arm, I believe. That one's that one's gnarly. Yeah, they're all gnarly. Dude, Nolly over Smith just seems so terrifying to try. Like, yeah, I believe. Because that trick, you have to specifically come close to the rail, which means you'd have to be putting yourself in a situation of touching on the way up, which would be like if you watch the spot he did it on, the rail is so tall. Yeah. And he had to yap out to it off a bench. It just looks like, ooh, the control and audacity of you, my guy. That is serious. <laughs> like, just one of those things you're just impressed. Like, I can't believe he did it. Um, we yeah, have favorite new age part would probably have to be Lou's part. He dropped and got video part of the year for it. I was like, I don't know. I think there's something to be really respected about him and Ben kind of looking at the video part and taking their own take on it, which is like artistic brilliance in my opinion. Like yeah. I remember like seeing a club post something like, Oh yeah. Like we didn't, uh, we didn't edit it with this song or whatever, and it's like now the thing. Yeah, you know, what I mean? it's cool that they did something different. They didn't follow a blueprint of what other people did. They did their own thing, and like, you know, when you do your own thing, it really stands alone. And I've been listening to the Channel Trace ever since daily. Yeah, like I love yeah. that shit, dude. Yeah. So good. Yeah, shout out Lewis Mills, man. He's... For sure, that's my guy. You I miss love him. him. I miss I him. Would love him. All-time favorite music to listen to when writing. Ooh. So I like like a lot of psychedelic rock. I love 90s hip hop. So I like kind of like music that gets your blood going. I think just because naturally I'm just so chill. Yeah. I like, I don't know, Pentagram always gets me going. Like classic Black Sabbath gets me going. Like 90s harder hip hop gets me going. Like just all, it all depends on the day. Every day I'm kind of like feeling something different. Different vibes, different moods. Right. What put me on some psychedelic rock though? Yeah, what, what I should I listen like to? The, I like the rev up. What's the What's the rev up? Like just music oh, that makes you juice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. just yeah. like something that's like I don't know. I think that's why I'm like lately been feeling like a lot of like older '90s hip hop, just because like it's just like kind of like it's almost like crime music. <laughs> yeah. Like psyching yourself up to go do something crazy. Yeah. Who who's when you say nineties hip hop, who are you talking about? Uh could be anyone from like, I don't know. Um really love Project Pat. Yeah, really love like Easy E, I don't know. Um 
it just depends daily you know yeah but, all lot. right and then psychedelic rock hit me with something that i should listen to later on today i mean doesn't get better than ultimate spinach but i would have to like look through my phone i have like just a bunch of random bands i've been really into uh the band witch witch yeah yeah they're super sick they're like i forget what they're they're not exactly psychedelic rock but they're like zam rock zen rock is that you said yeah i like zen rock i like they're the sound super of that. sick yeah and it's been a long time since I've listened to Ultimate Spinach, so except for the Fiend video over and over again. But uh, yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with like Mind Flowers on like a chilling day for like cleaning or stretching or something, you know? Yeah, it's definitely not a rev up, but <laughs> it's a rev down, but it's yeah. it's a vibe. Uh, yeah. How does it? Mauro Verone says, "How does it feel to be able to do everything? <laughs> Is there a trick that you can't do? I think I said that earlier. What trick? Can't backflip. Can't backflip." No, I mean, I've done them before, but like, I'm like, if I went to the skate park right now, like, there's not a resi there. I'm probably not going to do a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> Anything could happen. I might land manual and just get knocked the fuck out or something. Like, I've um, never done a backflip, not even on a bike in my entire life, dude. Yeah. I feel but like I'm missing out on something. That one was more by choice. I always thought that was like the, it was like a kind of like a boner contest move. <laughs> uh okay let's see what was the hardest trick to learn and what made it difficult mr fab tail whips tail whips every kid that learned a tail whip knows that one's hard i learned tail whips i think when i was like 13 yeah i didn't have like full on man strength yet and i can remember um trying to learn them off a box lip and i couldn't do it and the way i learned was on a quarter pipe because like if i airing could- the quarter yeah, because yeah. if I kicked on a quarter pipe, the rotation would help the bike get around so I can get on get back onto it. Yeah. I was just talking to Fu uh at Epic and he yeah. was he was, ta- he was reminiscing about teaching Max how to tail whip and it was the same thing. Just like you gotta use the momentum of the air on the quarter pipe. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean with BMX a lot of the tricks are kinda using the directions you're getting spit. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> let's see. We talked about diet. Zach Beerly asks, how long have you maintained fitness? How have you maintained fitness longevity all this time? I mean, I can't believe you're still doing what you're doing at 47. Garrett, can you please give us your secrets? Uh, So, I mean, dude, stretching, you can never go wrong. Stretching, hydrating, um, quality sleep is huge for healing, you know. Um, Diet, what you put in your body quality of water where you put in your body but like i don't know do a lot of stretching yoga and strengthen areas when they're hurt and i don't know that's pretty it. much just have to be dedicated to like if you have a problem with something try and figure it out and just be thorough with what you're working on try one thing one day see how it feels next if not try a different muscle group and just, you know yeah if you're not working on it, it's never gonna get anywhere exactly if you like put your mind to making your body better you're gonna figure it out you'll like look shit up and learn about all the stuff that you need to learn that too and you got to be positive about it you can't have that mentality that you're like if you're hurt and you can't figure it out you can't be like i'm not gonna heal right yeah like, your body wants to, to heal think, i'm gonna heal but i just need to figure out what's wrong first yeah big time it's easy i would bet to just get defeated and be like oh fuck my body's broken i was never gonna never gonna get fixed but that's yeah your body's gonna want to fix itself a lot of my older friends are there yeah um okay ronald this is not a question but please tell garrett to upload some raw behind the scenes video that's a tony thing that's a tony thing yeah yeah <laughs> i say we should use all our footage always but go talk, Tony's to more than I am. Go talk to Tony. uh okay we just talked about landing your first tail whip let's see ronald top five what's this? a lot of these are top five music bands we talked about that Let's. I mean, tell me about that. Ronald also says, "Tell us about your uh, your backyard park," and that's something that I wanted to come back to anyway. So, is this yeah. a recent thing? Yeah. So I have been trying to get. I bought my house in 2014, and I've been trying to get something built back there since then. It's quite a hard project because, like most houses in California, um, the yards aren't really flat, and I don't have very much space. I live in like North Park. It's kind of like a closer area to the city yeah um but the hardest thing i had to do is i had to get the slab poured the slab needed to be poured with retaining walls laid specific ways to engineer the hill ever dropping out from under it so it was just a 
really, really big project. And I would have probably got it done sooner, but um, looking into how much it was going to cost and stuff, I was getting close. I want to say around 2015, 16. And then we heard rumor of Nike dropping out of BMX. So I was like, oh shit, like rough times might be coming. It might be better to just kind of keep some loose money in case I need to try to keep my career going just because I want it for a few years rather than have a backyard park, even though I want the backyard park. So it got put on hold for quite a bit of time. And then I think in like 2020, I was riding a bunch during COVID and like eventually COVID was getting taken more seriously and seriously day by day. And like no one would come out. So I was like, fuck it, I'm about to just start flattening this yard out. So I broke like a 62 foot, I think like 29 inch retaining wall down with a pickaxe <laughs> most of my yard and then eventually i found my home uh a friend of a friend that i became friends with this kid tim who runs a high price construction he helped me finish everything out and he literally had to drive a, a mini bobcat down two foot uh two four foot retaining walls damn it's like one dude it's like one of the craziest things that i've ever seen i was like it's going yeah, downhill yeah. mountain biking on a bobcat dude. yeah but i mean he handled it and shit and he was like Hell dude yeah. i got you like if you're cool with me like I forget what it was. He was like, he's like, I might mess my AC unit up because I have an AC unit that's put into the ground on the backside where you had to enter my yeah. backyard. And he's like, I might crack the wall up and it might need repairs. I'm like, dude, it's like, if it means we're getting in the park, it's all good. Like, I'm totally down for it. Like, let's run it. So we got the slab poured and then I kind of struggled for a while with design. Uh, I used a program called SketchUp, which allows you to design things by the square foot. So you can understand like the size of obstacles you can fit and you can calculate square foot to like run in and run out, huh, they, yeah. which really helps for like a project like mine where like two to four feet really, it's like a big difference. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that and then kind of came up with a loose design. And then like the next phase was I was trying to get Corey Rogowski to do it because he Hell rides yeah. with me yeah. obviously. And he's just like, if when you get into the world of woodworking, I would say that he's the best. He's the shit. Like if you see his detail and shit, especially more as I've got into it, I'm like, damn, he's a fucking badass. But um, yeah, logistically, we were having trouble like finding the time for him to do it. And he wanted to bring his tools across country, which was just going to be like really expensive and hard. And I was like, I think I might just try to build some shit myself. And he was like, all right, like, dude, don't even stress it. Like, I don't, you know, like this is, it would just be hard for me to get all the tools out there. So um as of last year right before battle of hastings i just started building ramps and i thought it'd be kind of cool to like do it myself considering the space is really small it'd be good for me to know how to build and like change it up fuck yeah so i just kind of started building and i built some like the first ramps i built were just testers and i just pulled them apart and repurposed everything and like you know i I think like as of october i really started building it's so bomb dude yeah, it's still not finished. Still in the works. Of course. It'll taken, always be in the works. I gotta, yeah, I always have to do extra shit, but yeah, it's sick as fuck. And then, yeah. um, yeah, it's just it's been like a little dream. It's cool it's there, but now it's there. And I'm like super bored of it already. <laughs> it looks fun as hell from the footage that yeah. I've seen. Dude. No, it is. It is. Uh, Yo, Mac Attack says, why can't he wake up for the early sessions? Ha, ha, ha. Why can't I, I do these days, but I think when, uh, I think when he lived here, he was like, I was never on the morning sessions, but that was like my younger days when I was still going out and partying and stuff. Yeah, dude. I, I, like, dude, I used to sleep until noon one. Yeah. I can't picture doing that now, but yeah, that's yeah. insane. That's <laughs> insane. But like, I don't know that time too. Like, I don't know. There weren't as many skate parks in San Diego, like when he lived here. So like, I don't know, like there was no real reason to like wake up. Like you can't really ride most street spots any day of the week. So it's like, yeah, I like wait till like five o'clock when businesses are kind of letting out and there's more spot options and stuff. Yeah. And it's interesting to think about the, the weekday spot versus the weekend spot, the schools. It's so, there's so much that goes into spots and in street riding. Like yeah. You got to think about the time, the weather, the location, the business. 
Yeah. I mean, especially in California where like everything stays in business. And even if it goes under, someone just like immediately rents the property out or buys it. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's no there's, downtime. There's no there's abandoned no vacant, buildings. Yeah. There's like very few vacant land areas that yeah. have anything to ride. Shit. Dude, I think we've been going for three hours and 20 minutes. I could be wrong, but I think we have. Um, I, have I have no concept of time. <laughs> All there is is here and now, and I'm just breathing, brother. Yeah. Um, while you, let's see. So we got to do Mount Rushmore. Your personal, oh. your personal favorite Mount Rushmore uh, of um, BMX bikers. So I'd have to go Taj, Aiken, Joe Rich, and Ruben. I feel like most people that kind of grow up in my area would probably like agree with that you know like those yeah. are like are like the dudes that made riding look the best and changed basically like not the tricks we do but the way we use the bike and what looks good and what doesn't and then i feel like if you're going street rider you'd have to go with like van Corey, edwin brian castillo fire maybe jason ends too you know yeah and we so can add heads are, those are like, you know, one A, one B. No, no one's doesn't matter. They're all like, I think people that influence street riding so much. Even Stephen Hamilton. Dude, yeah, Stephen. And then I think if you were going for like the people that change. Do you have these written down right now? Are you yeah, I wrote down. Notes? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, just because, you know, I appreciate these guys. And I wanted to give them, pay them yeah. their respects. And then I feel like you have the, um, I guess like the people to be like the innovators that changed riding probably the most is probably like Matt Hoffman, Dave Mayer, Jay Mayer, Ryan Nyquist. Yeah. I think, I don't know. That era is kind of before me, but I know Matt Hoffman is like, I forget someone was telling me once, like he like made most of BMX tricks. Yeah. And he like, drove around like, and did freestyle shows and like created yeah. BMX he's, freestyle. He's Mr. BMX for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And also one of those things where it's before my time too, you have to research and learn. And it's, I mean, you know, yeah. the name it's like synonymous with BMX, but to really appreciate all the shit he did, I, you gotta yeah. go back and look it up. Yeah. And then pioneers. Yeah. Um, what else did you write down? Uh, that's pretty much it. Just the amount I you did. came prepared. Yeah. Well, no, I was thinking about it right before I called you. I was like, Oh shit. Like, cause I, I think when we were going to do it, I was like, yeah, let me like try to square that away. Cause I don't know, that's a hard one to be put on the spot for. Like yeah. I could be like literally sit there and be like for like 20 minutes, be like, uh, <laughs> uh but no, actually, uh when you went to take a piss, I kind of started writing a little timeline down and I was like, yeah, that's just too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, just too much shit. I mean and there's that, too, too many stories behind everything and like for real. There's, yeah. I there's so much that. shit to endlessly talk about. This is a you know, maybe we can do it again sometime. And yeah, sure. Fucking now that we got the the autobiography out of the way we can just talk about what the hell's going on in bmx or no pun yeah. intended but hopefully good things um shit that's that's it man will you show me your backyard yeah sure before we wrap yeah yeah Let's see i don't know exactly how well you'd be able to see it but i have a patio so that's a pretty sick view Damn. Yeah, that's dope. Cool. How do you get down there? You uh, walk, yeah, Bob. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Hell yeah. Not sure exactly what you can see. But yeah, there's two two entrance ways on like both sides of my my shit. So that's like kind of like the big obstacle I had to like really try to battle, like figuring out how to get a mini bobcat. And like all the concrete workers and stuff, all the rebar and stuff yeah. out there. That's all a the project. Footings. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 weird because when you look into it, like it's like almost engineer style. Like you need a really big ass company, and then that's almost too small for him to do. Yeah. These are the size, and then like if you go to like a little or like concrete company or whatever, they're like, "This is like a little big for us." Yeah, that is weird. They're kind of like an awkward level. Yeah um what do you got for the rest of the day what are you doing uh i think i might go ride fuck yeah where yeah, you know I might uh i might pop up kimball park is always really good later in the day um california you know like parks get a little bit crowded and shit 
Yeah. Kimball, Kimball has like no scene whatsoever. Cool. <laughs> so, well, they will now. I want to say uh, it has a, a really good up rail, down rail situation. Like it's the perfect shape rail and has a really fun A frame rail. Hell yeah. Let's go. So I just play, I'll play around on that thing for like hours. Fucking A, Garrett. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. It's nice yeah, to of talk course. to you. Um, my pleasure. And, you know, thank you for having me. And, Thank you for doing all the Fiend Boys. Like I really enjoyed um, Johnny and Matt's interviews and shit. Yeah, they're the best. And Lou, doing a really good job. Yeah, I love them. I, I, you you picked the best ones. You picked the best guys, Garrett. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, I've, I've had a few. I've had a little experience over the years. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So, uh, next up from Fiend, Colin. You know. Yeah. Oh, oh, got to got to talk to him about that. Uh, Fakey hop. Fakey hop. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay, it'd be you'd have a really good story and Colin's uh Colin's really good at talking and like he'd probably have his timeline super organized yeah I'll tell him to <laughs> write write out an essay and just read it on the all right <laughs> the floor is yours Colin and then once upon a time <laughs> I was born in Hamilton New Jersey <laughs> yeah shit man uh that's it anything else any uh any advice for young hungry kids uh if you trying to make anything out of your bmx riding just do it because you love it like the era of riding you're in right now is literally you have to do so much to stay relevant so like you know the kids to get involved really have to love it like there's no reason there's no reason to get involved with anything if you don't enjoy it because life's supposed to be about being happy solid dude there's one thing actually before we go i want to know who don't i follow that i should be following if Mm. anybody Good question. Good. You follow Martin Simmon? Mm, I don't know. Let's see how you spell it. Martin. Oh, it's S-I-M-A-N. Uh, would you yeah, say I'm followed sorry? by what's Lucas up? Fiend. Yeah, yeah. I do follow Marcus Simmon. All right, that that's a good one. I was like kind of psyched. I was like, oh, I actually thought of something. <laughs> yeah. Um. Fuck, I don't know. Is he from? Where's he from? Uh, Martin, I want to say he's Martin from Czech Smith. Republic, I believe. Nice. Yeah, he's nice with it. He's he's a he's a young gun. He's gonna be a threat in our future. You'll see. Hell yeah. He's been yeah. signing us footage, and I'm like, can't believe the shit he's doing. Dude, do you guys have a Deadline Joy Division shirt? Uh, yeah, I did one. Dude, that's sick. Yeah, I was always I was always a huge Joy Division fan. Yeah. I was just like, you know, obviously with Deadline stuff, you can just make little clipping masks. I was like, oh, that's like. That's something fire. i would like to wear you know yeah, like two things real. i like collabed into one yes sir oh some people uh, i think there's something that i wanted to ask you is do you need a washed up free coaster rider to ride for fiend <clears throat> yeah um send me the tape <laughs> i'll send you a tape dude i got yeah, a new dv with all my stunts you know yeah <laughs> and realize the first 30 seconds are gonna make or break your career so well, the first 30 seconds is me talking to the camera. Hi, my name is Bobby Canode. I'm 33 years old <laughs> from Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> hey, holy shit, he made his props bio. That's it. And I filmed, <laughs> filmed and edited it too. All right, dude. That's it. Let's get out of here. Thank you All guys right. for watching. All that. Adios. I think that that might be one of the longest episodes. So, uh, yeah, this is the end. Don't forget to like. Subscribe, share the show with a friend, leave a review. RawLife.com, promo code Canode, get superfoods, and have a good day. That's all. Oh, leave it, leave a comment if you want a round two with Garrett. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>